Chapter 591. Before the sun comes up. 4. The man next to Zhou Minye stiffened up. He opened his mouth to speak. How do you know the number of survivors from our original shelter? The auditorium had become silent. The people slowly started to realize the meaning behind the numbers Kale was mentioning after hearing Kim Ta Ihu's comment. Everybody here were leaders or chief executives of the newly created central shelters. That meant that the chances of them being leaders or people in charge of an original central shelter or smaller shelters were high. The people Kale had just called had all been leaders of the now destroyed original shelters. Kim Ta Ihu instantly started to sweat. 176 people. That's the number of people who survived from our shelter. The numbers Kale was saying was the number of people who managed to survive through the hell that had appeared when the original shelters were destroyed. Of course, there were more people in the new central shelter where Kim Ta Ihu was the leader. But that was the number of people who had made it out of his original shelter. How did you? How does this person know about that? Kale started to speak again as the ability users started to stiffen up. He was looking at the man next to Kim Ta Ihu. Ability user Park Young Hoon. You had quite a lot of survivors, 412 people. Park Young Hoon's jaw dropped. Kale looked at the people who couldn't hide their shocks and held in the bitterness he was feeling. Kong Il Rei, Joe Min Ye, Kim Ta Ihu, and Park Young Hoon. He didn't know what these people had experienced when their original shelters had fallen. What monsters appeared, what buildings were destroyed. How these people managed to survive, he didn't know about any of that. Kale remembered what happened around Korea on that day but had not been there to record it. But he did remember the numbers. Numbers were data that could give an overview of what had happened even without knowing the details. The number of survivors from the original central shelters. That hellish time had been recorded on a few sheets of A4 paper. It did not record the number of dead people, they could not check those numbers. There were too many people. When the world first experienced the cataclysm. Quite a lot of people had died. Then, when the original shelters crumbled. Humanity faced danger once again. That was the reason that the new central shelters that could fit tens of thousands of people had less than 10,000 total occupants. This was why only the number of survivors were recorded. There weren't any records of you if you died, the original central shelters. Kale slowly looked around at the people who had been leaders of those shelters as he started to speak again. Do I need to keep going? The entire auditorium was quiet. Zhou Min Ye quietly started to speak. Is this the power of foresight? The number of survivors. That wasn't enough to claim it to be foresight. But she had no other word than foresight to describe how this man who looked like a teenager could know the number of survivors from shelters around the country. Kong Il Rei, who was next to Zhou Minye, was keeping his mouth shut as he glared at Kale with a piercing gaze. Kale looked around before continuing to speak, I guess I will stop there. Kale was standing at the center of the platform. Choi Han was by the wall of the auditorium and looking around as if he was Kale's guard. Kale started to speak, I'm sure that not everybody here feels the same way as I do. Some of you probably just came for information and there may be some of you who will fight with us here in Seomyeon, but many of you likely do not wish to do so. Why should I fight with them to kill an unranked monster in Seomyeon? Why do I need to do that? It's hard enough for me to survive. It's hard enough to care for our people. There were many thoughts going through people's mind even without Kale having to say so. Everybody was aware of that fact, but the atmosphere inside the auditorium quickly changed. I will now make a prophecy. Prophecy. That magical word caught people's attention. The future. Kale wasn't actually making a prophecy, he was just telling them the things he experienced. Population will start to expand once more through these new central shelters and people will start to create a social system once again. Some people nodded their heads. These were the people who had recognized the defensive strength and expansive capabilities of the new central shelters. Furthermore, ability users will develop their abilities even more. Beyond that, there is data. Kale gently continued to speak with a smile on his face. We will gain data by facing these monsters and we will be able to hunt monsters with a sense of organization. The people who had felt chills at Kale's ability just now were starting to look better. When that happens, people will start to expand our territory once again, similar to what our ancestors had done, starting from the area around this shelter. More people were now nodding their heads, that seemed to be what they want in the future as well. The destroyed environment will slowly start to return to normal. Kale stopped after saying that. He needed to lead as many people, if not all of them, there. The selfish people, the greedy people, even they needed to come. He needed all of them to experience taking down an unranked monster. That was the only way to give them the data to survive the uncertain future. Because of that, Kale continued to speak with a smile on his face. Half of you here will die in order for us to get to that point. Silence filled the auditorium and it felt as if it had suddenly gotten many degrees colder. Kale still had a smile on his face as he continued to speak. Over half of you will die. That was the truth. That was the future that Kale had experienced. Altruistic people will die. Selfish people will die. People who were chasing after greed, going after the greater good, sacrificing themselves, running away on their own, all sorts of people will die. 
The smile disappeared from his face. All of that will happen in the next 15 years. Kale looked down at the people underneath the platform. But I wish to change what I saw through my foresight. Kong Il Ray started to speak again. How can you change something that you saw through foresight? Kale made eye contact with Kong Il Ray. Kong Il Ray flinched after seeing the gaze of the person he had called a child. Kale, the man with an unfathomably deep gaze, started to speak again. Zero people. Before people could even think about the meaning behind that number. That's the number of people who died at the original central shelter I was at. People started to gasp in response. This was not the number of survivors but the number of deceased people. Nobody had died. Originally, less than 100 people would have survived. That was the record of the past that Kim Rock Su had experienced. But the present had changed and therefore, the future has changed. Kim Rock Su and the others had changed it. I hope that everybody here is able to survive. He really meant it. Why? The more we shape the foundation to expand the number of people, the more chances humanity has for survival. He wanted to save as many people as possible. Some of them would go on to become the worst possible people, but he just had to pass a list with the names of those people to Lee Soo Hyuk and say that it was the result of his foresight. Lee Soo Hyuk was strong enough to look after those people and make sure they don't end up on that path. Have you heard this phrase? Kale started to again smile. Nothing beats numbers. Whether the unranked monsters were strong or not, whether monsters continued to appear. That's right. There's nothing. There are no monsters that can win when going up against a large number of people. That was how humans managed to survive in the future. The people in Kim Rock Su's memories would overcome everything. The unranked monsters are the greatest enemies for humans to recreate society in the future. Everybody was focused on what Kale had to say. Why? It is because they are monsters with unbelievable strength that can destroy the new central shelters. His voice was quieter but it was still loud enough for everybody in the quiet auditorium to hear. And because you don't know when that enemy might attack where you are. That meant that they could die whenever and wherever because a strong enemy with unfathomable strength. The weight of Kale's words was heavy to these people who were slowly starting to trust what Kale had to say. One of the people who were listening urgently shouted out. That. You can just use your foresight to tell us. Who knows when I will die? The person who asked flinched and closed his mouth. Kim Wu and Hyo Suk Ya. The two of them, as well as Choi Han's gazes were headed toward Kale. My foresight is not omnipotent. I can only see a sliver of the future and even I don't know when I will die. That is why I can only move in the best possible direction. Hyo Suk Ya, who had been listening, started to speak. The best possible direction, at that moment. Boom. Kale lightly stomped his foot. Everybody focused on him once again. I will now give all of you an opportunity. Opportunity. That word made people's expressions change. Kale looked at the changes in each of their expressions as he continued to speak. The way to defeat an unranked monster. The way to defeat a formidable enemy with unfathomable strength. I will give you the opportunity to experience the way to take them down. That experience will exponentially increase all of your chances of surviving the unpredictable future. Kale no longer looked like a feeble kid as he stood at the center of the platform. He reached his hand out toward the people and continued to speak. Will you take this opportunity? The air inside the auditorium was heating up and as the silence looked ready to be broken. Ah. Let me tell you one more fact. Kale nonchalantly added on. As long as I am here, this Busan Central Shelter will not be destroyed like the original shelters you all have experienced. Some people flinched. Zero people dead. Kale's words echoed in their minds. If they fought with him this time, they might be able to learn the way to save all of the people in their shelters with zero people dead in the future as well. The strong individuals from throughout the country were all gathered here. It would be hard to find this many strong people anywhere else. If they were with all these people, wouldn't it be a bit safer? As Kim Rock Su mentioned, wasn't this the opportunity to fight against an unranked monster in the safest possible situation? Furthermore, the people here will fight while looking at my back the most, at least for this battle. That meant that he would be in the front fighting more than anybody else. I will let you experience victory instead of experiencing just survival for the first time in a long while. Kale's words felt like thunder to these people who had barely managed to survive through difficult times and were doing their best to continue to survive in the future. Experiencing victory. They would be victorious against these motherfucking monsters that had dragged them to hell for the past few months that felt like an eternity. They would be victorious against one of the strongest monsters at that. Some of their expressions started to change even faster. Kale started to look bigger to the people inside the hall who were looking at his outreached hand. Please make your decision. Kale was done speaking and it was now time to hear their responses. Screech. One person stood up after a moment. Screech, screech. More people started to stand up as well. None of them were vocalizing the fact that they would fight with him, but it didn't matter. Hyo Suk Ya clenched her fist while watching them. It looked as if they would easily surpass one third or even half of the people in the auditorium at this rate. She then looked back toward Kale. I guess we won't even need to discuss the matter of making him the commander. 
Their original plan was to convince everybody that Kim Rock Su was the best person to be the commander for this plan to take down the unranked monster. But he had said that the Busan shelter would not be destroyed as long as he was here. He had said that he would fight in front of everybody. He had said that he would give them the opportunity to experience victory. Kale was already the commander and the leader of this place by saying that. Chapter 592, Before the Sun Comes Up 5. The gazes focused on Kale as he headed down from the platform were extremely heated. But Kale didn't look at those people. I leave it to you, ma'am. Hyo Suk Ya, who was walking up the stairs to the platform as Kale walked down, gave a short response. Hyo Suk Ya walked past Kale with Ma Sung Jin and one of her subordinates behind her. It's nothing. I should be thanking you. I'll take care of the rest. She then added on, Our dearest commander Nim. Kale stopped walking and looked toward Hyo Suk Ya. Hyo Suk Ya smiled when they made eye contact and continued to walk. Ma Sung Jin, who was following behind her, gently elbowed Kale's arm with his elbow as he started to speak. You looked cool. He then walked past Kale as well. Hyo Suk Ya started to speak once she made it up the platform. My name is Hyo Suk Ya and I am responsible for the defense here at the Siomian, Busan shelter. Everyone who wishes to participate in this battle against the unranked monster, please come this way. The gazes that had been on Kale moved to Hyo Suk Ya. Kale watched this for a moment before starting to walk once again and headed out of the auditorium. Choi Han followed behind him. There was someone standing at the entrance of the auditorium to greet him. Rock Su, that was a great speech, it was Lee Su Hyuk. Kale stared at Lee Su Hyuk, who was leaning against a pillar and looking at him with his arms crossed, and started to speak. Where's Park Jin Tae? Lee Su Hyuk still had black gloves on. Smile. The corners of Lee Su Hyuk's lips started to go up. Jin Tae is with Senior Kong. That meant that Park Jin Tae was beaten to a pulp and had to be carried over to Dr. Kang's for treatment. Lee Su Hyuk nonchalantly added on. I'll see him again when he wakes up. Kale started to think after hearing that. He really is getting beaten up properly. Lee Su Hyuk added on with a stoic expression at that moment. Jin Tae also said, see you later, before he fainted. Kale had a thought about this as well. Park Jin Tae really is a crazy bastard as well. Lee Su Hyuk laughed once more as he continued to speak. Wouldn't it be great if both Jin Tae's mind and body developed right now? Kale, who could sense the vicious meaning behind those words, calmly responded. That sounds great. Lee Su Hyuk watched Kale respond as if he was hearing about strangers before he started to speak again. You've been through a lot. He was not talking about giving the speech, he was talking about all the things Kale had to face up until now. Both Kale and Lee Su Hyuk knew about the many different meanings but did not reveal their fangs to each other. Anyway, Rock Su. Yes, sir. That monster that is going to show up in Guangali. The unranked monster that would appear in Busan's Guangali shores would then move toward the Siomian central shelter. Lee Su Hyuk slowly took off his black gloves as he asked. What is the name of that thing? Lee Su Hyuk was asking about the monster's name. Kale pulled its name out from his memories. Electric Eel. Ho. Lee Su Hyuk let out a short gasp. A scary monster that is unranked has such a stupid name? Yes, sir. That's its name. Did you give it that name? No team leader, you came up with the name later after you survived the attack. Kale held back those words. Lee Su Hyuk interpreted that short duration of silence as he pleased. You must have come up with that name since your foresight probably only let you see or hear the monster. Your naming sense is terrible. No, I understand. Kale felt wrong. But Lee Su Hyuk ignored Kale's expression and continued to speak. Ah, there was one thing I didn't like about your speech. Something he didn't like. Kale looked toward Lee Su Hyuk in confusion. Which part? Lee Su Hyuk looked back at Kale for a moment before taking a short look at Choi Han and then turning back toward Kale. I will be in the foremost position. Ah. Kale recalled what he said in his speech earlier. Furthermore, the people here will fight while looking at my back the most at least for this battle. The part about how they will see Kale's back the most. Lee Su Hyuk did not seem to like that comment. That was why Lee Su Hyuk was saying that he would be standing in the foremost position. The corners of Kale's lips twisted up. He looked toward Lee Su Hyuk who was walking away and started to speak. The person who will be in the foremost position will be decided based on the person's abilities. He was saying that Lee Su Hyuk could not stand in the front just because he wanted to do so. Lee Su Hyuk stopped walking for a moment to say something. That's great. He then started to walk away without any regrets once more. Choi Han looked toward Lee Su Hyuk and started to speak. How long do you think the current Lee Su Hyuk would need to become the Lee Su Hyuk at his strongest? Choi Han had seen the final images of Lee Su Hyuk's battle through Choi Yung Su's memories. Lee Su Hyuk was already stronger than all of the ability users here, but he was much weaker than his future self. Lee Su Hyuk's battle abilities would only be completed in a few years. Choi Han was curious about how long that would take. It was at that moment, Kale and nonchalantly responded. Probably soon. Excuse me. 
What does he mean by soon? Shouldn't it at least take a year or two to get there? Choi Han looked toward Kale in shock. Kale didn't pay any attention as he shared his expectations. He'll probably be close to that level by the end of this battle. Is something like that even possible? Peefed. Kale scoffed and then responded, That person is a genius. Choi Han, who was at a loss for words, started to think about something else. It's not an issue with his battle strength. It was similar to how Choi Han was teaching a sword art to Choi Yung Su. Kale wasn't personally teaching Lee Su Hyuk as Choi Han was doing with Yung Su, but there were things he wanted to show Lee Su Hyuk. These were things that did not come from strength but from experiences. Those things would all be visible and remembered in Lee Su Hyuk's memories after this battle. Kale slowly thought about the battle that would happen in less than three days. The image was being completed more and more as people started to slowly leave the auditorium. The Electric Eel. Unlike its stupid name, this unranked monster was extremely difficult to handle. It is extremely smart. It was not the type of monster that would just attack and destroy things without thinking by relying on its wild instincts. There were some unranked monsters like that, but the electric eel was extremely intelligent. Rock Su Hung. Are we heading over to Guangali right away? Kale nodded his head at Choi Han's question. Yes, we need to head there now. We need to confirm things in advance and get things prepared. There were less than three days left, he needed to use every minute wisely without wasting it. Kale would head to Guangali and prepare for the monster's arrival. I need to prepare for everything. Kale firmed his resolve over and over to be victorious. It was at that moment. Gasp, he heard someone gasp in shock. Kong Il Ray. It was the man who had raised his voice toward Kale when he went up to the platform. Hum. That man had tried to approach Kale before quickly retreating in shock. Gasp. W. What the hell is that? It was the same for the others as well. Kale felt someone tapping his shoulder at that moment. Rock Su Hung. Kale turned his head after hearing Choi Han quietly calling his name. He then looked toward where Choi Han was looking. Hum? In the distance, he could see why everyone had been shocked. He could tell why the ability users who had not seen Kale's group on their way to Busan were extremely shocked. Kong Il Ray started to point as he shouted, A, T, Tiger Monster. The large dark tiger was quickly jumping across buildings and headed over. Why are there no alarms going off? What the? Is this okay? Kim Kong Hoon, the Changwon Seongsan GU shelter's leader, couldn't finish speaking after realizing something about his surroundings. Everybody is quiet. People didn't seem to mind that a tiger monster was jumping over buildings to get here. In fact, some of the Seomyun shelter's people were looking at the tiger monster with a positive gaze. What is going on? Kim Kong Hoon was not the only one who realized this. That was why everybody prepared to attack but did not dare to attack. Ah. I haven't seen it in a while. Kim Kong Hoon looked toward the woman who had been sitting next to him for Kale's speech. Do you know that monster? The ability users nearby all focused on her. The woman shrugged her shoulder and pointed somewhere with her chin. Kale was standing there, it's that person's hung. Excuse me? The dark tiger landed in front of the auditorium at that moment. Boom. The tiger that landed with a loud noise fitting its large body approached Kale with its black mane fluttering majestically. Hung Nim. Kale warmly called out to the dark tiger. It really is his hung. Why is a monster his hung? Ho. There were many gasps of shock and admiration. Hyo Suk Ya walked up from behind them and said something. He is our ally. As people's expressions changed once more. They all heard the dark tiger's voice. Dong Sang, can we chat for a bit? Of course, Hung Nim. Kale didn't care about the people who were shocked at this sight they had never seen before and headed to a quiet spot with Alberu. They were outside the Seomian shelter walls. Kale confirmed that only Choi Han and Alberu were with him outside the castle walls as he started to speak. You were already able to complete everything I asked for, your majesty? Kale had asked Alberu to meet with Sherrod and the dragon half-blood regarding the issue with the dragons. No I fell asleep for a moment before heading out to meet Lord Sherrit Nim. Fell asleep for a moment. That meant that Alberu found time for a quick nap as he had something urgent to tell Kale. Alberu would come to this place once he fell asleep. Did something urgent happen? Kale's expression stiffened up. Quote dot dot dot. Did the White Star launch an attack? Choi Han's face was even stiffer as he asked that. Alberu shook his head. His mane fluttered majestically. No. It isn't either of those. Then what? Choi Han asked in confusion as Kale cut in. Did something happen in the library basement? Alberu nodded his head. I think I got some amazing information. Hum. Kale slightly flinched. Not I got some amazing information but I think I got some. It was different from how Alberu usually spoke. Let me first tell you what happened. Alberu shared everything that had happened when he was in the stone room at the basement of the Rhone Palace Library with Ron. The unbreakable spear. He explained everything that had happened as he earned that white spear and Choi Han's face slowly filled with astonishment. Kale kept his mouth shut and saved his comments. This really seems to be some amazing information. 
that was what Choi Han had to say once Alberu was finished. The Dark Tiger silently showed his agreement and looked toward Kale. Kale started to speak at that moment. Earth 3. Yeah. Choi Han interjected once Alberu answered. Wouldn't that mean that there are also Earth 1 and Earth 2? Maybe it is a parallel dimension or a parallel world. I had the same thought. I believe that if we use this information as the foundation to figure out some more things, we should be able to find the secrets about this world in this test, as well as get some benefits for what we need to do in the future. Choi Han raised his voice. That's right. I'm sure we will find some beneficial information if we gather some more. Alberu nodded his head. That is why I chatted with the spear before I came here. Alberu had chatted with the unbreakable spear before falling asleep. Kale nonchalantly commented, Is it an AI? Hum? Ah, nothing, your majesty. Kale shook his head and motioned for Alberu to continue. Another earth. How many are there in total? Was the place Kale and Alberu were from also an earth? Or was it a different planet? Kale was starting to get a headache at the fact that the scale of all of this was slowly getting bigger. I will only gather the information I need. Rather than being interested in Earth 3 or whatnot, he would listen to the information Alberu had gathered and just try to remember the information that was related to this place and the place he would return to. That spear introduced itself as, tearing. Alberu stopped talking as if he was organizing thoughts before starting to speak again. Apparently Dungeon suddenly appeared in that world and caused the birth of hunters. Hum? What? Kale subconsciously started to speak. Hunters? Yes. And dungeons? Yes. A monster wave? There was apparently something like that as well. Ho. Kale could only laugh. Alberu didn't care as he wanted to quickly share the information he had gathered. It seems like the ability users here are called hunters in that world, but that place looked a bit different than here. How so? Choi Han seemed very interested as he asked. Choi Han's eyes were sparkling at this new information. According to Taerung, something called levels exist in that world and you can gain stats by going through the dungeons. You can use the stats you gain from leveling up to get stronger. Ah, but even that cannot overcome natural talents. It really is different than here. There is no system of leveling up in this place. There is the application and development of abilities, but it is not displayed as a numeric value. Choi Han nodded his head with a serious expression. Yes. The natural-born talents in that world range from FFF grade to SSS grade. Beyond that, there is even an EX grade. An FFF grade hunter who levels up would still find it difficult to catch up to an SSS grade hunter. Kale silently wiped his face after hearing what Alberu had to say. According to Taerung, Alberu remembered it clearly as it was quite peculiar and seemed very important. That was why he was able to repeat it word for word. It said that, by using me, even an FFF grade hunter would become extremely wealthy and their path in life would be a breeze with no obstacles. Ha. Huh. Kale, who had read all sorts of different genres of novels, brushed his face once again with both hands. But Kale soon lowered both hands and had no choice but to look at Alberu, it was because of what Alberu said next. In addition, I asked Taerung about the monster that was used as the ingredient to create that spear. Alberu had instantly figured out what he needed to ask the moment he heard about Earth 3. Kale's gaze headed up to Alberu's eyes. That monster that was extremely strong to the point it was almost unbelievable is an alien race with two legs, eight wings, dragon scales, a lion's head, and an eagle's claws. Kale and Alberu made eye contact at that moment. Kale started to speak. It's one of the sculptures that was in the temple of the demonic god. As I expected. Alberu's eyes clouded over. Kale nonchalantly added on. The strongest of the monsters. Out of the eight sculptures, he had faced six of those monsters. But there were two monsters that were most likely stronger than those six monsters. The monster that was the strongest of them all. Alberu was describing the appearance of that monster. Kale, who had been getting many headaches at the fact that there were two monsters even stronger than those six yet he had no data about them, finally saw a ray of hope. Alberu, who had the same thought as Kale, started to speak again. Apparently, my spear is the only weapon that can destroy that monster's bones? Then we just have to destroy it. Kale and Alberu, both the human and the tiger started to smile. Commander-in-Chief Nim, the first strategy meeting. The meeting room was filled with the representatives of each region that were selected by the ability users from all around the country. Kim Kong Hoon, the Jongnam representative, looked toward Kale and asked. The electric eel. How is that monster going to infiltrate the Seomian shelter? The intelligent first unranked monster. The monster that appeared in front of the people who never even dreamt about the existence of these unranked monsters. The monster had quietly appeared from underwater and used a stealthy method to destroy everything. Kale gave a short response. The subway. The Seomian shelter was connected through the underground. That was the reason this place had no choice but to become a ferocious battlefield in the past. Chapter 593. Before the sun comes up, 6. The monster is going to attack through the subway? We would have been screwed if we didn't know about it. The subway. The people in the room repeated that word in their minds. This meeting room was the size of an indoor gymnasium. Kale started to speak again. 
The electric eel. That monster will use the subway to travel close to Seomian before showing itself and attacking the Seomian shelter. Something seems weird. Someone raised their hand at that moment. It was Zhou Min Ye, the Jonam representative. What is weird? She responded to Kale's question. I don't know the situation at Busan, but I'm certain that most of the subway tunnels are destroyed and full of debris. There should be many paths that are impossible for it to cross. Zhou Min Ye looked toward Hyo Suk Ya who was next to Kale. Hyo Suk Ya nodded her head. That's right. Our Seomian Shelter's rescue team members have checked out the subway tunnels, and although none of them are fully blocked, many of them are at least partially destroyed. But this monster is still able to stealthily cross through those paths to get to Seomian? Zhou Min Ye shook her head. She then looked back toward Kale and continued to speak. I was expecting a large monster as it is an unranked monster, but I guess it is smaller than I expected. Flutter. They heard wings fluttering at that moment. Most of the people inside this auditorium-like meeting room peeked toward the direction. What are you looking at? The steel feather hawk glared at them as she fluttered her wings. The different representatives had a thought on their minds as they looked at her. He said that this monster was a grade 1 monster. Even this monster would not be able to properly cross through the subway tunnels. He said that the unranked monsters were incomprehensible and incomparable to grade 1 monsters, it must be much smaller than we expected. The steel feather hawk could not cross through the subway tunnels because of her wings. Ahem. That unranked monster is not small. Kong Il Rei, the Jonbuk representative coughed as he interjected. It might be smaller than what we all expected, but the subway tunnels are not small. He peeked toward Kale as he continued to speak, and our commander Nim over here. He pointed toward Kale with both hands. Zhou Min Ye, who had been sitting next to Kong Il Rei during Kale's speech, chuckled at Kong Il Rei's demeanor, but Kong Il Rei feigned ignorance as he continued to speak. According to what our commander Nim mentioned, the monster's name is the electric eel. It is probably like a snake in that it may have a small body, but it wouldn't be small if it was extremely long, would it? That made sense. Ki He Ran, the Chungbuk representative, started to speak. And the monster's size is not important, the main thing to worry about is its destructive force. Kim Kong Hoon, the Jongnam representative nodded his head after hearing her being serious unlike how she had acted while sitting next to him during the speech and talking about Kale's strength. That's right. Either way, we just need to catch the one bastard coming through the tunnel, no? Smile. Kim Kong Hoon smiled as if it would be simple. No, hum? Kim Kong Hoon turned after hearing someone disagree with him. Kale was the one who had spoken, it is not just one. What do you may a, HMPH, he heard someone snort at that moment. Wu Hung Nim. It was Kim Wu, the person who was a central figure at the Seomian shelter with Hyo Suk Ya and Lee Su Hyuk. Kim Kong Hoon was looking at Kim Wu, who had snorted at his comment, with a confused expression. Kim Wu showed no reaction to his gaze and just turned toward Kale. It was as if he was saying that Kale would give the answer. Tap. They heard someone lightly tap on the table at that moment. It was Kale. The electric eel has two heads, excuse me? It is able to split its body in half as well. The representatives of each region opened their eyes in shock. Two of them. The monster that had two heads was able to split its body into two. That pretty much meant that there would be two monsters. Kale recalled an old record as he looked at these astonished people. That was the reason people at the Siamian shelter struggled. The unranked monster that had traveled from Guangali to Siomian underground fused its body together around Siomian and started to attack. The people at Siomian shelter did not notice it traveling underground as they were busy dealing with the monsters that were going by from the appearance of the unranked monster. That was why it had felt as if a large monster had suddenly appeared and started to destroy everything. Tap. Kale tapped on the table once more. We will now show you the map of our operation. Kim Min Jun and Lee Jin Ju who were standing behind him brought a large piece of paper forward. CHHH the paper was opened on top of the table, the subway route? The map of Busan's subway system was in front of them. The route map that had been useless until recently because there were no trains going through had now been turned into a strategic map for the operation. Now then. Kale pointed toward the map. Is there only one train that comes to Siomian? Guangan Station was nearby Guangali Beach, the route heading from there to Siomian Station. Zhou Min Ye answered quietly. Quote dot dot dot. There are two. There were two routes from Guangan Station to Siomian Station. They were part of different transfer routes, but none of that mattered now that the subways were not in use. What mattered was that there was a path. That was what was important. This. Moon Se Woon, the Gongwan Du representative, started to frown. It could not be helped. So then the monster must not be small. Kale calmly answered. That's right. It is not small. It is quite large even when it is split into two, but it is extremely large when it fuses together. It grows exponentially when it fuses together. Kong Il Rei touched his dry lips as he started to speak. The monster should become a bit weaker when it splits into two. Am I right? Kale slowly nodded his head. It is much weaker when it is split compared to when it is fused together. Of course. That's a relief. 
Kong Il Ray's face lit up before it stiffened up after hearing what Kale said next. Of course, it is much stronger than the Grade 1 monsters that attacked the original shelters even when it is split into two and only has one head. Quote dot dot dot. Ho. Oh, it is stronger than not just a Grade 1 monster, but the Grade 1 monsters plural. Kim Wu started to speak as Kim Kong Hoon stated in disbelief. That is why it is unranked. It is at a different level of strength. Kim Wu slowly started to look toward Kale. His voice was slow as he continued to talk. And our commander is planning on killing all of those monsters. The people surrounding the table all looked toward Kale. Kale started to speak with a stoic expression. Yes. I plan on killing all of them one by one. Kim Kong Hoon, the Jongnam representative, started to speak. W. Will that be possible? Kale started to smile as he responded to the nervously stated question. Yes, sir. I, and we, will make it happen. Tap. 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 The representatives of each region could see some files being placed in front of them. Kim Min Jun, Lee Jin Ju, Lee Sung Won were putting thin piles of paper explaining the operation. Those documents will tell you all of your respective roles. The representatives of each region picked up the documents placed in front of them. Please become familiar with it by tomorrow. They were all listening to what Kale had to say. We plan on heading out at noon tomorrow. The people would all head to their respective battlefields tomorrow. Everybody looked toward Kale again, and the day after tomorrow. Unlike the past, the humans were now aware of the enemies aiming for them. We will start the hunt, no, the battle. The battle that was to come was a hunt to take down an unranked monster, a battle between humanity and monsters for victory. Click. A teacup was placed on the table. The finger holding the teacup moved away from the cup as the person started to speak. You came at Kale's request? That is correct, Sherit Nim. Sherit's gaze headed toward the blonde hair and blue-eyed man sitting across from her. Alberu Crossman. He smiled after seeing her gaze and quietly looked at the man standing behind Sherit. It was a stoic gaze that seemed to be inspecting something. You are alive. The dragon half-blood looked so pale that he could probably die at any moment, but he looked back at Alberu with an emotionless gaze. Sherit turned to look at the dragon half-blood at that moment. Flinch. The dragon half-blood flinched after making eye contact with Sherit and lowered his head. It was at that moment. Everything should be the same when Kale returns. Sherit's gaze that was full of loneliness, bitterness, sorrow, and all sorts of other emotions moved away from the dragon half-blood as she continued to speak in an emotionless voice. I didn't think we should cause any aspect to become any worse than it is now until that child returns. Wouldn't that child only be able to do as he wishes if things stay the same? Sherit was using her magic to delay the dragon half-blood's death as much as possible. This was only possible because she was extremely skilled in magic and because she was the dragon lord, the dragon who knew the most about the power of the dragons embedded in the dragon half-blood's heart. Of course, I'm sure the pain became even worse. The dragon half-blood's pain exponentially increased in order to prolong his life. It was probably difficult to just breathe. Alberu asked the dragon half-blood a question. Are you okay? The dragon half-blood just stood behind Sherit without responding. Alberu thought that he looked like a knight trying to protect his liege. However, that was not something he should say out loud without thinking. Crunch crunch. Rayon was quietly sitting down while munching on a cookie. Sherit was petting his head. Alberu saw the quiet Rayon peeking toward Sherit in the dragon half-blood as he started to speak. That's great. As he made eye contact with the dragon half-blood again. Kale told me that the dragon half-blood should still be alive for me to ask something. Both Sherit and the dragon half-blood flinched. Anyway, I will get right to the point as I am busy right now. He was still looking at the dragon half-blood. Alberu recalled what Kale had told him. Your Majesty, I will tell you the conversation I had with the Dragon Half-Blood in the past. Kale, Arahaban, the Dragon Half-Blood, and Rayon. It was apparently a conversation among the four of them. There was something the Dragon Half-Blood had said when Arahaban and the Dragon Half-Blood first met. That was why you ended up being the last one. He took a sip of tea as he started to speak. According to Kale, you said that Arahaban Nim was the last dragon to kill. Correct. The White Star designated Aruhaban as the last dragon to kill. Alberu nodded his head and recalled something else. Arahaban had asked the dragon half-blood who responded to him. Was my heart meant to be yours as well? No that's not it. That person just said he needed it, but I don't know what he was going to use it for. Alberu started to speak while recalling the conversation Kale shared with him. You still don't know where Arahaban Nim's heart was to be used? I don't. I've been thinking about it, but I cannot figure it out at all. Then how many dragons have you killed in total? The dragon half-blood flinched after hearing this question. But Alberu didn't give him the opening to say anything. Based on what Kale told me, the reason Arahaban Nim was selected as the last dragon to kill was because Arahaban Nim communicated with other dragons. Doesn't that mean that you were worried about being found out by the other dragons after killing Arahaban Nim? You could say that. Hum. Tap. Alberu put the teacup down on the table. Dragons. He had been mesmerized at the thought of using such an existence as his allies. 
But it was now time to calmly assess the situation now. Sherat Nim. Hum. How many dragons were there when you were the lord, Sherat Nim? Sherat slowly responded as if she was thinking about it. Usually. There were a total of 15 to 25 dragons on the eastern and western continents combined in a generation. 10 if there were less than normal. Tap, tap, tap. Alberu's index finger tapped on the armrest. The dragon half-blood's heart had five dragons. Then there was Olian. There were at least six dead dragons. Whether the White Star gave the order or personally killed them. There were probably more than six dead. Anyway, there should be some living dragons even if there aren't that many. Even if the White Star moved stealthily, it would have been difficult for him to kill so many dragons without the dragon half-blood, who was sensitive to the aura of dragons, knowing about it. He made that comment and looked in front of him. He looked at the three existences related to dragons. It was at that moment. Knock knock knock. Someone knocked and they heard the wolf boy Locke's voice. Excuse me, Tasha Nim is here. Alberu stood up from his seat. I asked her to come. He then walked over to the door and turned the doorknob. Screech. The door opened and Tasha smiled at the people inside. Long time no see, everyone. She looked a bit tired as she looked toward Alberu. I came because you said you had an urgent question for me, what is going on? Why had he asked her to meet him here at Sherat Nim's castle? Tasha was curious about that as well but did not ask in front of the dragons. Alberu started to speak at that moment. Kale told me something. Sherat, Rayon, and the dragon half-blood all looked toward Alberu once again after hearing him mention Kale. He said that in the past, Mayor Obanti Nim, Obanti, the mayor of the underground city of the Dark Elves. He was Tasha's grandfather and a 522 years old Dark Elf. Told Kale that he had met a dragon before. Ah, you're right. Rayon jumped up and fluttered his wings. Rayon recalled something from his memories. It had happened when they first went to the underground city in the Desert of Death with Tasha. It was when they had met Mayor Obanti for the first time and before they had met Mary. Obanti had looked toward Kale and said the following. I have met a dragon nim in the past. I felt the same feeling that I am feeling now. My elemental, which met that dragon nim with me, says it is similar as well. Mayor Obanti had said that before welcoming Rayon, who had shouted, I am the great and mighty Rayon Miru. That's right. The dark elf Gramps said that to the human, he said he saw a dragon with his elemental. Alberu recalled a moment during his conversation with Kale. He had asked Kale a question. It is a minimum of six dragons according to what the dragon half-blood had said, but if the white star killed some dragons without him knowing. Do you think there are any dragons left? Even if there are, I don't think there will be many. Alberu had cautiously asked because he knew that the white star was the dragon slayer. Kale had calmly answered. First, please check with Aruhaban Nim to see if there are any other dragons he could contact and find out the locations of other dragons. Other than that, um. Kale had then said someone's name. Dragons are extremely independent, so there is no way Arahaban Nim is in contact with every dragon. Then wouldn't they be difficult to locate? I think you should first dig into Mayor Obanti Nim's side, your majesty. Hum. The Mayor Nim? Yes, sir. If you find one dragon, you might somehow end up finding the rest of the dragons as well. Alberu, who had found it odd to talk about his relative, stopped thinking about that moment and asked Tasha a question. Mayor Obanti Nim. Where did great-grandfather see a dragon? Alberu was slowly preparing things one by one for Kale's return, no, for the battle that might be the last war. He was preparing to start a war to end all things and bring peace to the world the moment Kale returns. At that moment, Kale slowly opened the door to the training ground. Choi, it was at that moment. Bong. There was a loud noise right next to Kale. He turned his gaze. The door he opened, at the wall right next to it. Ah. A person had slammed into the wall before falling down to the ground. It was Choi Yung Su. Fuck. He did not even notice Kale as he started to swear. Chapter 594. Before the sun comes up, 7, Choi Yung Su pushed against the ground in order to stand up. So easily, he was speaking his thoughts out loud. Choi Yung Su raised his head and looked forward. Choi Han was standing there with a loose grip on his sword. How many times has it been? He had stopped counting a long time ago. He had sparred with Choi Han too many times to count, however, he still couldn't win. Just the tip of his clothes. I would win if I could even touch the tip of his clothes. The way for Choi Yung Su to defeat Choi Han was to cut even one millimeter off the tip of Choi Han's clothes. But forget Choi Han's clothes, Choi Yung Su had not even been able to block Choi Han's sword properly for the last few days. Ah! His clenched fist was shaking. It was because of his anger toward himself. He heard a calm voice at that moment. Are you guys at least eating properly while you fight? Choi Yung Su's shoulders flinched. He had not realized that someone had shown up. His head urgently turned toward the source of the noise. Choi Yung Su and Kale made eye contact. You're covered in dust. Choi Yung Su looked away after hearing Kale's emotionless voice. Choi Yung Su looked like a mess right now. His clothes and body were covered in dust and he was drenched in sweat. 
Most importantly, his eyes were bloodshot and looked terrible. Choi Young Su was aware of how terrible he looked right now. That was why he was avoiding Kale's calm face, he heard Choi Han's voice at that moment. We are making sure to eat every meal. I'm making sure that he gets the proper nutrients for each meal as well. Kale's expression turned odd. Vicious bastard, he looks fine. Choi Han looked completely fine without even a single drop of sweat. It made Kale recall when he watched Choi Han training the wolf children. The children had looked similar to Choi Young Su at that time. But he's not hurt anywhere. Kale's gaze moved to the wall that Choi Young Su had crashed into. It was not a regular stone wall but a wall with a soft cushion on it. That wall was the only one with a dent while the other stone walls did not show any signs of damage at all. He's also feeding him on time and making sure he gets proper nutrients. Choi Young Su's complexion was good for someone going through a difficult training schedule. Well, everything other than his bloodshot eyes that is. Peak. Kale's gaze headed toward Choi Han. Choi Han's gaze as he looked at Choi Young Su was innocent and full of warmth and satisfaction. He's totally pampering him. Kale's expression turned even odder. Shit. Choi Young Su lowered his head after seeing Kale's face turn even odder. It looked as if Kale was feeling pity for him after seeing his condition. He couldn't even raise his head to look at Choi Han. How weak must I be too? How weak and easy of an opponent must he be that Choi Han could smile and defeat him without even trying? He had gotten the chills after watching Choi Han fight before, but he could truly tell how strong Choi Han was after going up against him. He felt like a tall and sturdy wall. Kale looked back and forth between Choi Young Su, who had his head down, and Choi Han, who was looking at him with a satisfied expression, before making a comment. Do you just spar with each other? Choi Han responded to him. Training the body is all about the basics. Choi Young Su's shoulders flinched at that moment. It was because he had heard what Choi Han had just said somewhere else. Choi Young Su thought for a moment before recalling some memories that he had buried deep inside. Training the body is all about the basics, his father had said that. Young Su, training the body is something any martial artist in our Choi family must do. That was what his grandmother had said. Hey, how can you defeat me when I'm older than you? I've been training my body for two years longer than you have. My foundation is much stronger than yours, so how can you win? And his older cousin, he recalled the things that the people close to him had said over and over. Choi Han looked at Kale and continued to speak, and you must build experience through sparring. Choi Young Su's father had said the following, build your experiences through sparring. Choi Young Su's lowered head slowly started to rise. Kale looked toward Choi Han and asked at that moment. It looks like a real fight rather than a spar. Choi Young Su had a response to that in his mind. It was something that his mother had said at some point. Choi Young Su looked toward Choi Han, his pupils were slightly shaking. Choi Han looked at Kale and responded to the question at that moment. The intensity of the sparring might seem too much, but a real battle is a place full of death. You can't compare the weight of such battles with this spar. Choi Young Su could hear his mother's voice in his mind. Son. The weight of a real battle cannot even compare to a spar like this. Real battles are situations where you may be close to death at any time. Choi Han continued to speak. In a real battle, you are fighting for your life and the lives of your allies on the battlefield, in order to save everyone. Young Su, in order to protect yourself and your people at that time. Choi Young Su started to speak, for yourself and your people. You have to work your ass off while you train. Both Choi Han and Kale looked toward Choi Young Su. Choi Young Su smiled after seeing their gazes. Choi Han quietly looked at him before starting to speak. That is correct. His mother and father, as well as everybody who had taught Choi Young Su, had said the following. You must work your ass off and train in order to protect yourself and your people. Choi Young Su realized something at this moment. Choi Han's sword art and his family's sword art had the same foundation. Although the foundation was the same, Choi Han's sword art had been developed further for real battles. It's there. Choi Young Su looked directly at Choi Han who had the same family name as him and became more certain about something. There's definitely some type of relationship between this person and me. His eyes clouded over as he quietly observed Choi Han. Choi Han avoided his gaze at that moment. Choi Young Su started to smile. Kale, who was watching this, started to smile as well. Looks like Choi Young Su is sharper than Choi Han. Would the innocent Choi Han be able to keep the two of their relationship a secret from the sly and smart Choi Young Su? Well, I'm sure he'll take care of it. It was only right for Kale to just watch what happened between these two people without getting involved. Choi Han already knows about this, but we are planning on leaving at noon tomorrow. Choi Han had a stoic expression while Choi Young Su looked toward Kale with a slightly nervous expression. Do what you need to do to prepare. Kale then walked back out of the training ground after saying that. But he saw someone open the training ground door and come out before he could even let go of the doorknob. Um. The person groaning was Lee Chul Minimum. Kale looked at him and calmly started to speak. You look like shit. Lee Chul Min bit down on his lips. 
Someone started to speak from behind him at that moment. Are you not going to move? The person sounded quite tired. Lee Chul Min flinched and quickly walked out of the doorway and the person behind him appeared as well. It was Park Jin Tae. Kim Rock Su. Kale and Park Jin Tae made eye contact and both of them let go of the door. Boom. The door of both training grounds closed. The two of them stood with the doors to the two training grounds behind them as they quietly observed each other. Eventually, Park Jin Tae looked away and started to walk. Lee Chul Min peeked for a bit before quickly following behind Park Jin Tae. Kale just watched Park Jin Tae and Lee Chul Min walk away. They looked terrible. Lee Chul Min and Park Jin Tae looked much worse than Choi Young Su. Park Jin Tae looked much worse than Lee Chul Minimum, his hand. Both of Park Jin Tae's hands were covered in bandages and those bandages were bloody. It was at that moment. Bong. They heard a loud noise that filled the hallway. Kale looked toward the wall right next to the door from where Park Jin Tae had come out. The wall was sticking out and starting to crack. Kale started to speak. The training ground wall is going to be destroyed. Park Jin Tae stopped walking, but Kale was still looking at the cracked training ground wall. There was a loud noise coming from inside the training ground even after Lee Chul Min and Park Jin Tae had left. The person responsible for this was Lee Su Hyuk. Lee Su Hyuk was currently training Lee Chul Min and Park Jin Tae. Of course, Lee Chul Min probably thinks it is torture rather than training. Lee Chul Min just completely avoided Kale's gaze. Kale looked toward Park Jin Tae who had turned around and nonchalantly commented. Having more training is always good. Park Jin Tae's shoulders stiffened a bit after hearing what Kale said next. But it's bad if it is going to affect you in the real battle. Park Jin Tae's expression sank while Lee Chul Min who saw this quickly looked back at Kale before not knowing where to look after seeing Kale's even colder gaze. Park Jin Tae soon started to speak. I am taking care of my body. Tap. Tap. Park Jin Tae could see Kim Rock Su walk past him. He was looking at Kim Rock Su's back as he had quickly passed by him when Kale started to speak again. Good, that's how it should be. He then made one last comment. See you tomorrow. Kale then didn't even look at Park Jin Tae and Lee Chul Min before opening the door and walking into the third training ground. There were some people waiting for him there. Sir, you're here? You're here. Bei Pu Rum, the man who rides the wind, and Kim Min Ah, the woman with Herculean strength. Rock Su, you're here? Mr. Rock Su, you're here. Jang Man Su, the defensive wall, and Ju Ho Shik, the man with the power of faith. Kale headed toward the middle of these four people who were training. He started to speak to the four people who were looking at him. We are heading out tomorrow, so let's only train for about two hours today. Training is. Bei Pu Rum and Kim Min Ah cut Kale off and finished his sentence. Is all about efficiency, is all about efficiency? Yes, you are correct. Kale chuckled and stretched out his arms. Crackle. Splash a current in water. Those two powers started to come out of Kale's body. I'll keep it light today. He flicked his hand toward the four people. Come at me. The day before they headed out. The final training was happening throughout the entire shelter. Screech the large castle gate slowly opened. Early November. The air that was cold even though it was the middle of the day spread out to the outside of the castle gate. Boom. And once the castle gate was completely opened. Hung Nim. Let's go. Of course, my dong sang. The large tiger whose black mane was majestically fluttering revealed itself. There was a young man wearing a black military uniform on top of the tiger. This man was between a boy and a young man. Kale, this man who was in between those two ages, looked toward the castle wall. And on top of the castle wall, Hyo Suk Ya, who would be responsible for the defense of the Seomian shelter while they went to fight against the unranked monster, was standing there. Kale nodded his head and Hyo Suk Ya blew into the horn flute in her hand. P a large bird shot up into the air from inside the castle walls. Screech. The hawk with steel feathers flew in the sky with some people on her back as she cast her shadow down at the castle. The steel feather hawk was looking somewhere. At the end of her gaze was. The dark tiger who slowly turned around. Kale could now see the numerous people gathered behind him. These people had followed behind Kale with Choi Han at the front. There were the Seomian shelters people standing behind Lee Su Hyuk. There were also the representatives from around the country who had agreed to participate in this battle. Kale looked down toward them and caressed the tiger's mane. The dark tiger slowly looked forward again. Kale could feel the nervousness and excitement in the people behind him as he closed his eyes. It starts now. He would change one more thing just as he had already done. I will completely change the future. No, he would destroy his despair. Kale opened his eyes again. The ruined city was in front of him. However, he could clearly see the path he needed to take. He opened his mouth to speak. Everybody, to your positions. Numerous people quickly started to move out of the Seomian shelter and toward their respective positions for the operation. Chapter 595. Look at the back of the person standing in the front, 1. 
Less than the names of places and businesses showing up in this novel are fictional. Greater than. Lee Sung Won started to use his recording ability. It is currently 12 p.m. on November 6. Time had flown by since they left the shelter yesterday. The words coming out of Lee Sung Won's mouth were being recorded. We are currently stationed on the third floor of Moonlight Hotel located directly across from Guangali Beach. There were many hotels built on the street facing Guangali Beach. Lee Sung Won was currently standing inside Moonlight Hotel, one of those many hotels. This hotel was originally over 10 stories high but only about 4 stories of it now remained. Sha they could feel the ocean breeze. The area around Guangali Beach is covered in a thick fog, making it difficult to see anything. The fog made it impossible to tell where that breeze was coming from. Forget the Guangan Bridge, we are unable to even see the sand on the beach. Boom. 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 Lee Sung Won's heart was beating wildly from nervousness. The fog had suddenly pushed in from the horizon at midnight. That fog covered a part of Guangali in the entire Busan area according to their reports. It was as if it was announcing the arrival of the enemy king. That was why Lee Sung Won was anxious as he stood here without being able to see much. He felt his lips drying out as he started to speak again. We are currently waiting for the first unranked monster, the electric eel. He was scared. His ability would not let him defeat a grade 3 monster let alone a grade 1 monster. But he was in the vanguard in the fight against this unranked monster. It'll be fine. Lee Sung Won consoled himself. In this hotel room with the windows all broken. There was someone leaning on a pillar by the windowsill with his arms crossed. Are you done recording? Yeah, I'm done, Hung. Kim Rock Su was here with him. Lee Sung Won's finger started to move. Click. Lee Sung Won's first recording ended with that quiet click. My heart is beating so quickly. Lee Sung Won's gaze started to move. Kim Kong Hoon, the Changwon Seongsan GU shelter's leader and current Jongnam representative, was sitting on an old couch he found from who knows where. Kale, Lee Sung Won, and Kim Kong Hoon. Only these three people were here right now. They were the only ones in all of Gwangali. Single quote dot dot dot. I didn't really think that only the three of us would come here. Kim Kong Hoon was getting a bad feeling as time passed on. The fog had slowly started to cover Busan starting on November 6 as Commander Kim Rock Su had mentioned. He could feel the foresight becoming a reality with his own body. There's no need to be nervous. He turned his head after hearing a voice. Kim Rock Su was looking at him. There's no need to be worried either. Kim Kong Hoon became even more worried after hearing his calm voice. Why? We are not attacking the monster from here. We are just here to watch. Exactly. That's why I'm even more scared. That's the reason only three of us are here. Kim Kong Hoon was wondering if he should not have stepped up. This combination seemed more unreliable the more he thought about it. Lee Sung Won is not an attack type ability user. He isn't a defense type either. He has zero fighting ability. And. I heard that Kim Rock Su is strong, but I have not seen it with my own eyes. That was why he could only trust himself. Kim Kong Hoon bit down on his lips with nervousness. Uh, uh. He then heard Lee Sung Won's voice and. It's here. He also heard Kim Rock Su's calm voice. Kale pulled on the string of the blinds they had installed yesterday. About two thirds of the window was covered starting from the top. Put the light out. Lee Sung Won, who had been stuttering, quickly put out the candle after hearing Kale's stern voice. Who, the room instantly turned dark. But that darkness was not what Lee Sung Won and Kim Kong Hoon were focused on right now. CHH. This noise was different from the sound of the wind. It was definitely the sound of something moving through the water. It was the sound of the monster getting closer. They could then see it. Kim Kong Hoon moved over to Kale who was crouching and looked out the open third of the blinds. M. My goodness. He could see it. Out in the distance where the water should be but he could only see white fog right now. M. Monster. It was large. Something much larger than the buildings located in Guangali was slowly cutting through the water and headed toward them. He couldn't see its shape properly, but he could tell that it had two heads. Commander, that, your mouth. Kim Kong Hoon subconsciously covered his mouth after hearing Kale's comment. Kale didn't even look at Kim Kong Hoon as he put his index finger up to his mouth. Shesh. Lee Sung Won, who had been about to speak as well, quickly shut his mouth. Silence filled the room. All they could hear was the monster approaching from the distance. Closer. Slowly getting faster. The monster was getting closer. Kim Kong Hoon tried not to say anything, but he couldn't hold back. Commander Nim, how can such a large monster go through the subway? The large monster that was covered by the fog would not be able to fit inside the subway tunnels even if it was split in half. Even if it gets smaller when it splits into two, there should still be a limit to it. Kim Kong Hoon subconsciously continued to speak, even if it splits its body into two and shrinks MMPH. Kale covered his mouth. It'll hear you. Kim Kong Hoon recalled what Kale had explained about the electric eel. As this monster has two heads, each head has different abilities. 
This stays the same even when the body is split into two. That meant that the abilities of the electric eel would be split following the abilities of each head when split into two bodies. That is why it is possible to take it down. Kim Kong Hoon covered his own mouth after Kale removed his hand. The yellow head specializes in sounds and electricity. He then heard Kale's quiet whisper, Please get started. Kale then shut up as well. But that was enough. Kim Kong Hoon quickly formed a hand seal. Ooh, it felt as if the quiet cry of an animal could be heard. Pot. A half transparent blue light surrounded Kim Kong Hoon, Kale, and Lee Sung Won. Kale had an odd expression while looking at the light surrounding his body. He peeked toward Kim Kong Hoon. Kim Kong Hoon, the shadow of the moon. That was the nickname that would be given to Kim Kong Hoon, the Jongnam representative, in the future. He had a special ability related to stealth and movement. I remember that enemies would not be able to see him nor sense him when he uses his abilities as long as the sun is not out. They wouldn't be able to sense a certain level of noise and presence that came with moving around. Furthermore, the enemies would not be able to see them moving. However, people surrounded by the blue light could sense each other. Of course, if the enemy caught them once because they made too much noise or failed an attack, it could not be used on the same enemy ever again. In addition, it could not be used underneath the sun. That might seem like quite the restriction, but the night was scarier than the day in this world. The sun is not visible because of the thick fog right now. Although it was the middle of the day, the sun was not visible and the thick fog made it feel quite gloomy. Tap. Kim Kong Hoon gently tapped on Kale's arm, he then nodded his head. Commander Nim, you don't need to worry about our presence anymore. He could tell that that was the message being conveyed through Kim Kong Hoon's eyes. That was why Kale brazenly lifted the blinds a little more. It was at that moment. Shaw they heard a different noise than the sound of something moving through the water. Finally, the faintly visible large monster was now clearly visible. M.M. Lee Sung Won held back a gasp and covered his mouth with both hands. This, what the? The monster with two different looking heads, one yellow and one blue, cut through the sand and landed on Busan. That's an eel? Lee Sung Won's pupils were shaking. Kim Kong Hoon was having the same thought as well. That's a snake, no, an I Mugi, his hands were sweating. No, should I call it a dragon? This indescribable monster with quite the presence was leisurely moving. Silently. Majestically. The electric eel was moving its two heads in different directions as it slowly looked through the fog. It was as if it could see everything even with the fog covering the city. Kim Kong Hoon had this thought in his mind. It looks like a monster from mythology. Its scales were inside the fog but the mixture of blue and yellow was sparkling. It was beautiful. That was why he was scared. It looked like a monster at the level of the gods. He started to get the chills. Kim Rock Su was right. The unranked monsters. These were completely different than the monsters they had fought against until now. The presence they gave off was completely incomparable to the grade 1 monsters. If we had to face this kind of monster without knowing anything. Kim Kong Hoon was starting to sweat. Lee Sung Won was curling up in fear. The large monster started to move at that moment. Gua. The buildings were being destroyed as it moved past them. MMPH. Gasp. Shush that large body moved past right in front of the Moonlight Hotel. Kim Kong Hoon and Lee Sung Won froze where they were standing. Tap. Tap. The two of them felt a warm hand on their shoulders at that moment. It was Kale. Kale nodded his head with his usual expression on his face. Let's move. That was what he was saying with this motion. Kale cautiously started to walk toward the roof even though their presence was hidden. Ah. That's a relief. Kim Kong Hoon subconsciously had that thought for a moment. His frozen body started to melt as he felt relief while looking at the person walking in front of him and his unwavering back. He offered his back to Lee Sung Won. Lee Sung Won got on and the three of them soon reached the hotel's roof. The large monster had its body in a straight line and was looking at a single spot with both of its heads when they got up there. As expected. Kale started to smile. The electric eel was looking directly at the Gwangan station entrances heading underground. SSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSS
as the yellow head made a loud noise and half of its body was inside the tunnel. The yellow head should not be able to hear us anymore. The two of them heard Kale's voice. Kim Kong Hoon and Lee Sung Won turned their heads. Let's move. Swoosh a gust of wind surrounded the three people. Kale kicked off the ground and jumped across buildings to head toward Gwangan Station. Kim Kong Hoon followed behind him with Lee Sung Won on his back. They're fast. Kim Kong Hoon could see the yellow head and blue head moving underground quickly. It had been loud when they were destroying the entrances into the subway, but their movements were extremely stealthy after that. The Seomian shelter would never see them coming, are we following them down? The three of them stopped at a building near Gwangan Station and Kale checked the time before nodding his head at Kim Kong Hoon's question. Carefully. Yes, sir. The three of them were extremely careful on their way down even though their presences were hidden. It's a mess. Lee Sung Won looked at the subway station that had turned into a mess. Honestly speaking, the three of them couldn't see anything other than the area around them lit up by the blue light surrounding them, but they could see some damages from the monster moving through. Flick. Kale motioned for them to follow him. Kim Kong Hoon headed farther down following behind Kale. Stop. Kale then stopped walking. The two eels were already gone. They should have moved in different directions. Kale crouched down. He reached his hand out and touched some water. Kale looked at the paths with traces of water. He then raised his other hand. Squad 1, Squad 2, can you hear me? There was a walkie-talkie in his hand. Yes, sir, we can hear you. We can hear you, Commander Nim. Kim Kong Hoon, who had been watching him, gulped after hearing the other's voices. It's starting. The plan to hunt this monster that gave off quite a lot of pressure when he saw it in person was starting. Kale's calm voice echoed through the area. The two electric eels have started to move. There were two paths to get from Gwangan Station to Seomian using the subway. The first path was using Line 2 that went directly to Seomian. The other path was going through Gwangan Suyong Yansen Seomian. The yellow head is moving toward Suyong. Gwangan Suyong Yansen Seomian. The one headed down that route was the yellow head that specializes in electricity and sounds. I am giving an order as the commander. Kale gave his first order. Destroy Suyong Station once the yellow head passes through. Yes, Commander Nim. At the same time, he was not done giving his order. Also destroy Yansen Station. Yes, sir, beep. A different walkie-talkie in Kale's inner pocket started to go off at that moment. Kale took the walkie-talkie and heard a familiar voice. Commander Nim. It was Choi Han who was hiding elsewhere. It is moving past Suyong Station. Suyong Station was right after Gwangan Station. The yellow head was going through the tunnels extremely quickly. It wanted to get to the Seomian Station as quickly as possible and start killing people. Kale opened his mouth to speak. He channeled the sound of the wind once more at the same time. Swoosh including Lee Sung Won and Kim Kong Hoon. All three of them were surrounded by the wind. Line 3 that connects Suyong Station and Yonsen Station. While the first head was stuck in between the two stations. We will kill the second head first. Kale kicked off the ground. His body quickly started to move while following the traces of water left behind. The second head. He was chasing after the blue head. It has passed Suyong Station. Kale heard Choi Han's voice and raised his walkie-talkie. 5. 4. 3. 2. Kim Kong Hoon gulped while following behind him. 1. Kale calmly gave the order. Detonate. Detonate. Dash. Detonate. He heard the voices of the people in charge of Squad 1 and Squad 2. And. Boom. Kale felt a strong rumbling coming from the opposite direction. It was caused by the explosion down the tunnel without any traces of water, the tunnel that the yellow head traveled through. Is it here? Kale stopped in front of a subway tunnel. Line 2, the train that would go straight from Gwangan to Siamion. Smile. Kale started to smile. He looked toward Kim Kong Hoon. Let's maintain our stealth. Yes, sir. It didn't matter if the blue head found them now, but Kale was hiding his presence in order to increase their chances of success. Blue lights appeared once again in the path the blue head passed through. Kale continued to speak with a smile on his face. All right then, shall we go step on its tail? They were now the predators instead of the prey running away. Kim Kong Hoon and Lee Sung One's eyes opened wide. Swoosh Kale was still surrounded by wind. Crack. Crackle. Rose gold-colored thunderbolts started to appear around him. The blue head. The second head's attribute was water and it had strong poisonous fangs. A red current on top of Kale's hand was shining through the darkness. Chapter 596. Look at the back of the person standing in the front too. Detonate. The moment they heard Kim Rock Su's voice through the walkie-talkie. Bei Pu Rum raised his voice. The attack has started. Boom. Boom. They heard the ground rumbling in numerous locations. Bei Pu Rum was on the ground above Dayan Station, located between Gwangan Station and Siamian Station. The people here were guarding all exits 1 through 4 heading underground to Dayan Station. Roar. Screech. Monsters started to appear from within the thick fog. 
The monsters were running wild as if they had gone crazy, no, as if they were struck with fear. It is exactly as our rock Su hung, no, our commander Nim said it would be. Bei Pu Rum recalled what Kim Rock Su had said as he watched. Other monsters will run wild once the unranked monster appears. It will be different than when the monsters attack the original shelters, but monsters from all around Busan will start to rampage. Kim Rock Su had said that in a stern tone. We need to kill the unranked monster first without getting swept up by that rampage. Bei Pu Rums heard someone's voice at that moment. I guess we can get started now. The person who spoke was Ki He Ran, the Chungbuk representative who was responsible for Squad 5. Yes, ma'am. Bei Pu Rum responded energetically and repeated what Kim Rock Su had told them, word for word. In order to not get swept up in that rampage, please quickly and efficiently take care of the monsters above ground. You just need to quickly and efficiently take care of the monsters. I know. Ki He Ran then started to run toward the monsters that had appeared from within the fog. She then started to shout. Let's go. Yes, ma'am. The Chungbuk ability users all cast their abilities as they moved away from the Dayon station entrance and rushed toward the monsters. Ki He Ran's eyes were glowing gold. One behind the building in the 3 o'clock direction. One 500 meters in the 7 o'clock direction next to the shopping mall building. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. The Chungbuk ability users quickly split up and headed toward the locations she had shouted. Everything she saw would have been monsters. Fuck them up one by one. The fog did not hinder her sight at all. This was the reason Kale had asked Ki He Ran to be the squad leader for the above ground attack team along line 2. Wow. She's no joke. Bei Pu Rum was amazed by Ki He Ran's efficient and accurate orders before flinching. This is squad 2. It was from Squad 2 that had just detonated the bombs in Suyang Station. We have confirmed that the first head is blocked in the tunnel. Um, Bei Pu Rum subconsciously clenched his fists. The first step had succeeded. Their plan was to barricade one of the two monsters between Yansen Station and Suyang Station to start. Now we just need to get rid of the second head during this time. He needed to wait for Kim Rock Su to contact him in order to do that. Did Kale read Bei Pu Rum's thoughts? Good job. Kim Rock Su gave a short praise before commenting on the next step. I'm currently by Namchian Station. Flinch. Bei Pu Rum flinched once more. Soon. Dayon Station was one stop away from Namchian Station. He slowly looked behind him. He looked toward Exit 1. They had destroyed Exits 2, 3, and 4 on purpose. Exit 1 was the only exit that was clear to go through. And right here at Dayon Station. The members of Squad 3 were waiting at the stairs heading underground through Exit 1. We'll step on the second head's tail soon. Kim Rock Su's stoic voice continued. Bei Pu Rum looked at each of the people stationed at the stairs. I guess it's time to go. Kim Min Ah got up after making eye contact with him, and behind her. I truly believed it would succeed. Ju Ho Shik had his hands clenched together as he stopped leaning on a pillar. Boss. Lee Chul Min quickly got up after seeing Park Jin Tae get up while Park Jin Tae was quietly looking somewhere with his face that was full of injuries. Bei Pu Rum and the others were all looking in the same direction as well. The Dark Exit 1. One of the people who was standing at the boundary between the dark staircase and the outside picked up his sword. Squad 3, go. That person started to speak after hearing Kim Rock Su's voice. Let's go down. That person was Lee Su Hyuk, it was at that moment. Please have a safe trip. Leader Nim, please return soon. We'll be waiting for you right here. Around exit 1. No, the rescue team members stationed by all exits at Dayon Station raised their voices toward the people heading underground. There were a couple hundred of them. These were Lee Su Hyuk's original rescue team members as well as some battle type ability users from the Seomian shelter. Their goal today was not to rescue people but battle monsters. There was also another group of people. It was the group of ability users led by Zhou Min Ye, the Jonim representative. I hope this goes well. Zhou Min Ye could not help but be concerned as she looked at the people heading underground. The violent rampage of the monsters, the fog covering all of Busan. And this unknown monster, she couldn't help but be concerned. Zhou Min Ye stood in front of Exit 1 and started to speak. Everybody stay alert. Bei Pu Rum, the last of the people heading underground, heard Zhou Min Ye's voice as he quickly headed down. He then held the walkie-talkie out as he started to speak. Um, Leader Nim. He called Lee Su Hyuk leader as the rescue team does. Lee Su Hyuk's gaze slowly headed toward Bei Pu Rum before looking down at his hand. You hold on to it. He said that before quickly heading down. Bei Pu Rum looked toward Lee Su Hyuk and quietly sighed. Wow. Lee Su Hyuk had not even spoken sharply to him but the atmosphere around Lee Su Hyuk was no joke. It's not just that person. Park Jin Tae was serious as well. The two of them were standing shoulder to shoulder in the front of their group. Hey, come to the back. Yeah. Okay. Bei Pu Rum quickly headed back after hearing Kim Min Ah's voice and put the walkie-talkie up to his lips. This is Squad 3. We are currently heading underground. We will get there soon. 
Kim Rock Su did not respond. That meant that the three people on Kim Rock Su's side had found the second head's tail and were stealthily following behind it. Everybody here realized that fact and came to a single conclusion. The monster will be here soon. They would finally meet the monster they had been preparing to defeat. Lee Su Hyuk's gaze sunk a bit as they continued to head underground. It was at that moment. Are you not nervous? He heard Park Jin Tae's voice behind him. I'm not sure. Nervous. Lee Su Hyuk gave a short response. I really don't know. He really didn't know. He didn't know whether he was nervous or excited. Or, maybe I'm looking forward to something. Fighting against a monster did not cause excitement or anticipation. But for some odd reason, Lee Su Hyuk had multiple emotions going through his mind today. Lee Su Hyuk slightly loosened the grip on his scabbard. Maybe I am like this because of how things are, he had been feeling tired. There seemed to be no end to these battles and people who needed saving. He had seen too many of his friends fall down and leave this world. After experiencing all those things over and over again for close to a year, Lee Su Hyuk had become filled with this unknown fatigue. But Lee Su Hyuk's mindset had slowly changed after meeting Kim Rock Su again. The weight of his burdens and responsibility had moved to someone else. Kim Rock Su, although his identity had not changed, that punk had changed too much while they had been away from each other. I've been properly stimulated. The corners of Lee Su Hyuk's lips started to go up. I'm going to light the torches. The torches started to light up one by one after Bei Pu Rum shouted. The torches they had prepared in advance were now lit. They could see inside Dayon Station now. Lee Su Hyuk stood in front of the platform. He then looked to the right. Bei Pu Rum heard a noise from the walkie talkie in his hand. Past Kyan Sung Univ and Pukyong Natal Univ Station. Lee Su Hyuk stepped off the platform. Step step. He then started to walk. He was headed in the direction of Kyan Sung Univ and Pukyong Natal Univ Station. Not quickly, but not too slowly, he was just walking. He could feel it under his feet, bong in the distance. In the darkness away from the platform lit by torches. He could hear something destroying things and getting closer. It's coming. The second head is coming. Clang. Lee Su Hyuk tapped the hilt of his sword with his thumb. The blue blade became visible every time he tapped it. It was at that moment. Go. The moment he heard Kim Rock Su's voice in the walkie-talkie behind him. Let's go. Lee Su Hyuk kicked off the tracks and darted forward. Yes, sir. Park Jin Tae and Kim Min Ah were right behind him. Lee Su Hyuk didn't even look back at the two of them. He only looked forward. Even though it was pitch black and he couldn't see anything. Bang. Bang. He could feel the monster getting closer and closer as the sounds of destruction became louder. Lee Su Hyuk could feel his heart beating wildly. Why? I guess I am in the front as I wanted. He had been placed in the vanguard. The person who would run into the monster's face first. Is me, Lee Su Hyuk, Clang. The blade that had been hidden inside the scabbard revealed itself. Lee Su Hyuk saw the bright eyes of the blue monster that glowed in the darkness. He finally met it, he met his prey, he met someone once again as well. Hey, Rock Su. Didn't I get here right on time? He couldn't see behind the large blue monster. However, he was certain that the punk who would soon step on this monster's tail was there. It was at that moment. Crackle, in the darkness behind the blue monster. Crack, crackle. There were red currents shooting up. He didn't need a response from Kim Rock Su, you're here. That was the response, he heard a voice at that moment. Release. Kim Kong Hoon released his stealth ability as soon as Kale shouted. The blue head flinched, it noticed the enemies behind it once the stealth was broken. Kim Kong Hoon quickly retreated with Lee Sung One on his back, he heard Lee Sung One's voice as they moved. This is the start of the recording. Kim Kong Hoon Rum got chills all over his body. Crackle. Crack. The red current that was roaring along with the wind. The current that was traveling through Kale's body and overflowing made the blue head stop moving. Crock. The subway tunnel cracked as the blue head tried to turn around to face them. Was it because this eel had twisted its body? Kale and the others could see a person with his sword drawn behind the blue head. Kim Kong Hoon retreated even farther as he heard Lee Sung One's voice. Commander Kim Kong Hoon and rescue team leader Lee Su Hyuk. The rose gold current shot forward with the wind. The first battle of this war has started. Kim Kong Hoon saw Kale's mouth start to open at that moment. Lee Su Hyuk. Kale could see Lee Su Hyuk smiling after hearing him calling his name. Lee Su Hyuk started to speak. Are you just saying my name like that because you became the commander? He said that to himself before looking toward Kale and saying something else. Yes, Commander Nim. Kale started to smile. He had been waiting for this moment. The moment he could fight against the enemies with his team leader once again. He had gone through numerous simulations in his head to not only survive but to achieve a perfect victory. He would see the end of that simulation now. He gave Lee Su Hyuk an order. Cut the poisonous fangs off. The snake-like blue eyes of the monster looked toward Kale. 
He looked toward the monster and continued to speak. I will hold this bastard down. Bong. The person surrounded by rose gold thunderbolts crashed into the blue monster that looked similar to an Aimugi of legends. On the other side of that rose gold thunderbolt was a person with the ability of the slashing nature of a sword charging in as well. Chapter 597. Look at the back of the person standing in the front, 3. Inside the dark subway tunnel. The rose gold light that was as red as blood flowed out in all directions. Bong. The loud noise that sounded as if the entire tunnel would crumble shook the surrounding area. Ah. Uh. Kim Kong Hoon subconsciously took a few steps back. His eyes were in pain from the sudden bright light. He could not hide his shock. Quote dot dot dot. Such strength. He had such strength. He had heard a lot of people talk about Kim Rock Su's strength, but it was completely different seeing it in person. He has foresight and a thunderbolt like this. Kim Kong Hoon heard Lee Sung Wan, who was on his back, start to speak at that moment. That's not all. What? There's more. Quote dot dot dot. Ho. He could only gasp in shock as he stepped farther back. It was at that moment. He gasped once more. As the rose gold light disappeared, I guess it is an unranked monster even when it is split into two. The blue headed monster that had curled up its body could be seen. Bei Pu Rum shouted as well, There aren't any injuries. He recalled what Kale had said, This electric eel has scales. They're so strong that most attacks won't even leave a scratch. He had also said something else. That is why we need rescue team leader Lee Su Hyuk. Bei Pu Rum looked toward the spot where the rose gold light had disappeared. In the short opening created when the blue head that was curled up slowly raised its head. He could see Lee Su Hyuk running toward that opening. The blue head will curl up and protect itself with its scales when I attack. That was their chance. Leader Lee Su Hyuk will definitely create an opening. Kim Rock Su's voice echoed on his mind, at that moment. How disappointing. Lee Su Hyuk and the blue monster's eyes met. Smile. The corners of Lee Su Hyuk's lips started to go up. I was planning on chopping off your poisonous fangs first, but I guess I'll just have to put that off until later. His sword then slashed sideways. Kim Min Ah started to speak while standing next to Bei Pu Rum. There's no noise. The sword was swung. However, there was no noise at all. Ju Ho Shik started to frown. Is he cutting the wind as well? There wasn't a black aura like Choi Han. It wasn't like Kim Min Ah's attack that caused a gust of wind or an earthquake due to its strength. A fancy rose gold light or a shield did not appear as with Kale. All he did was silently swing his sword sideways. But Kale could see the drops of sweat gathering on Lee Su Hyuk's forehead. Lee Su Hyuk gave everything he had to this silent action. His sword, his attribute, activated its powers stronger than ever before in response to Lee Su Hyuk giving it his all. Slash. These scales that Kale wouldn't have been able to damage even if he used any or all of his current half powered ancient powers together. A portion of those scales was slashed. Slosh. The tender skin underneath the damaged scales was cut open and blue blood shot out. Compared to this large and long body, this small injury was extremely small. It was only about half the size of an adult woman's palm. The reason that people were able to survive the attack of the first unranked monster in the past. It had a lot to do with Lee Su Hyuk's power. Huff. Lee Su Hyuk stumbled and knelt down after creating that opening. You worked hard, sir. You're speaking respectfully again? Kale supported Lee Su Hyuk from behind. Lee Su Hyuk's back was completely drenched in sweat. At that moment, Screech, the blue monster that had never expected a sword to cause it an injury screamed and raised its body. Blood dripped down from the cut, but the monster was so angry that it did not care. They could feel the monster preparing to release its powers in anger. It truly is no joke as you mentioned. I could only cause that small injury while using this much of my strength. Lee Su Hyuk scoffed before using his sword as support to stand up. He had won most fights in the end until now, but he felt something while looking at this unranked monster. I wouldn't have been able to defeat this monster if I wasn't prepared and if he had tried to carry the weight of everything on his own. Not only would he have had to use all of his strength, but he would also have had to put his life on the line. But not now. He had created an opening. Now then, next. It was someone else's turn now. Lee Su Hyuk felt Kale pushing him back down and started to speak. Park Jin Tae. The opening. The opening that was half the size of a cheek. It looked small, but it was quite large for a certain someone. Especially since that person was Park Jin Tae who had a gun in his hand. Who? Park Jin Tae let out a deep breath. The barrel of his gun had already been pointed at the opening from the moment Lee Su Hyuk had slashed it open. Roar. The moment the blue head noticed Park Jin Tae. You're too late. Park Jin Tae had already pulled the trigger. Tang. Tang. Two bullets shot out in succession. The blue head tried to twist its body to dodge the things it would have normally scoffed at that were flying toward it. But it wasn't easy. This subway tunnel only left a bit of open space for a monster of its size. 
choosing to split into two and make itself weaker for stealthy movement. Choosing to go through this narrow tunnel, when those things became an obstacle for the monster. Bong. One bullet hit the wall of the subway tunnel and exploded. As for the remaining bullet. Bong. Roar. It pierced into the monster's injury and exploded. The exposed skin without any protection was no longer gushing out blue blood. Once the explosion happened, the injury opened farther and it started bleeding black. Screech. Roar. The monster twisted its body in pain. But even that was not easy in this narrow tunnel, there were still many hunters left. I'm going. A person reported to Kale before darting forward toward the blue head. It was Kim min -ah. Her eyes were focused on the flailing blue monster's body. Your accuracy still needs work. Kim Rock Su had said that to Kim min -ah after their few days of training had come to an end. But I won't tell you the direction this time, you need to aim on your own. Will that be okay? Of course. Kim min -ah could feel the wind that was surrounding her body as she moved forward. This wind belonged to Kim Rock Su, who was paler now after using the rose gold thunderbolt. Kim Rock Su had added the wind for her, but it was up to Kim Min Ah to decide how the wind would move. Your strength is the greatest, she swung a spear. You should be able to pierce through it even without perfect aim as long as even a bit of it touches that injury. You don't need me to hit it perfectly. Well, you've worked hard the last few days. It should work since you trained hard. She had trained hard, she had trained a lot as well. She couldn't recall how much sweat she had shed in the training ground with Bei Pu Rum. She clenched her hand. Crack. The spear cracked a little under the pressure of her strength. She was not using the weapon she usually summoned. That was why it now had a crack. The blue head twisted its body in order to dodge the spear. Her spear did not manage to reach the opening on the blue-headed monster's wound. Not yet. Bong. Screech. Ah. Uh, you should know that I'm here too. I can't let our Min Ah's attack end up missing. Bei Pu Rum was surrounded by the wind as he slammed into the blue head. That made the monster return to its original position. They had planned for Bei Pu Rum to do this. The monster's injury ended up being located exactly where Kim Min Ah and Bei Pu Rum had planned. Bei Pu Rum, good job. Really, thanks to him, her spear ended up landing on target. Croc, she heard it crack. Who? Kim Kong Hoon gasped. I knew it. I knew they could do it. Lee Sung Won was cheering. The injury caused by Lee Su Hyuk and expanded by Park Jin Tae. There was a steel spear that was somewhat crushed from Kim Min Ah's Herculean strength stabbed into that spot. Kim Min Ah had stabbed the spear into the monster's body, all the way down to its bones. Who, who? Although it was only half of the monster, it still took a lot of strength to stab an unranked monster with enough force to pierce a weapon into its bone. Ha! Kim Min Ah continued to breathe heavily. Kim Kong Hoon's eyes opened wide at that moment and he started to shout. Ha! Huh? Ha! Huh? Dodge. The monster glared at Kim Min Ah and charged toward her. Roar. There were two large fangs visible in its open mouth. Those fangs were dripping black liquids and looked ready to pierce right through her. It's okay. The moment Kim Kong Hoon heard Lee Sung Won's confident voice. Did I do well? Bei Pu Rum quickly flew over, hugged her, and retreated. This area might be narrow for the monster, but it was wide for humans, allowing him to quickly move around. Yes, you did well. Kim Min Ah patted Bei Pu Rum's head and then looked toward Kim Rock Su. Good job. Kim Min Ah started to smile once she saw Kale's mouth form what seemed to be those words. Kale smiled as well. The steel spear stabbed into the blue head's body. And the fact that the blue head's ability was water. Why aren't you using your ability? The blue head glared at Kale. It realized that the leader and the person who would land the final attack was Kale. Lee Su Hyuk started to mumble while looking at the blue monster that was glaring at Kale. Steel and water. It should work properly this time. Crackle. Crack. Kim Rock Su's thunderbolt should work. Kale's entire body was surrounded by rose gold thunderbolts once again. A person next to Kale clasped his hands together. I have faith. It was Ju Ho Shik. I have faith that the commander Nim's thunderbolt will follow the spear into that monster's body and make that bastard perish. His gaze and his faith headed toward Kale. I have faith. Crackle. The rose gold light became even stronger. Kale felt the power of the fire of destruction with his entire body as he started to think. I will give it my best. Kale decided to use as much strength as he could possibly use in the present situation. He needed to do that this time, the yellow head. There was one more bastard to take down. Choi Han and the others should be holding that bastard back right now. This group needed to quickly meet up with them over there. Kale noticed the blue head look somewhere at that moment. He opened his mouth to speak. Above. The blue head had already changed directions by the time he had shouted. The blue head headed for the ceiling of the subway tunnel. The others started to run toward the blue head at the same time. We were expecting that. Bei Pu Rum, shut up and attack. Bei Pu Rum and Kim Min Ah recalled what Kale had said. If it keeps being attacked and is placed in a dangerous situation, the monster will try to get out of the tunnel and head above ground. 
The two of them had wondered if that would be bad. However, but it doesn't matter. Kale picked up the walkie-talkie and started to speak. Please get it ready. Yes, sir. I got it. Zhou Minye would be up there even if the bluehead managed to make it out. Zhou Minye, the spider web fisherwoman. The spider web she casts was a thicker web than anything in the world. Even if the blue head managed to make a hole in the ceiling, Zhou Minye's spider web would be waiting for it. That was why Kale had said the following to the others. Once the blue head is flustered because of the spider web, I will kill it. Crackle. Kale headed toward the blue monster that was pushing its head into the ceiling. It's possible. It was possible to hunt them one by one without having anybody die. Kale had that thought and channeled even more of his fire of destruction into his hands. I have faith. Zhu Ho Shik shouted and the others prepared to attack to support Kale. I'll slash off one of the poisonous fangs for now. He heard Lee Su Hyuk next to him. Peefed. Kale started to laugh after hearing that even though he was extremely tense. If you have time to say that um, it was at that moment. Ha. Huh. Kale saw something. Our dear commander Rock Su, what's wrong? Lee Su Hyuk found Kale's reaction odd and looked at him before turning toward where Kale was looking. He then saw it. A horn? There was a horn coming out of the blue head's forehead. He then had a thought. Rock Su never mentioned a horn? He had not heard about a horn at all. Lee Su Hyuk quickly started to turn toward Kale after realizing that. Lee Su Hyuk was the only one who could hear Kale's quiet mumbling. It's different than the record. Record? Lee Su Hyuk's gaze was focused on Kale. However, Kale had no time to pay any attention to Lee Su Hyuk. It was because something else he had not expected had happened as well. P. There was a sharp noise coming through the walkie talkie. An emergency signal. This was the noise for when there was an urgent situation. Kale turned on the walkie talkie and heard Choi Han's voice. Rock Su Hung. It has one more ability. Shit. Lee Su Hyuk started to frown in shock. On the other hand, Kale's gaze started to sink. I knew it. Why had Kale continued to be tense while preparing to fight this unranked monster when his record should have had all the information? Why had Kale gathered as many people as possible even though his record told him all of the monster's weaknesses? It was because of a simple reason the record's blind spot. There were times his record did not have all the facts. Just like what happened right now. The appearance of the first unranked monster. All of the records he had about this incident were based on the memories of the survivors because it was before the new system had been created. In that case, couldn't their memories have been wrong? Or, it's possible that they did not see all of the monster's abilities. Wasn't it possible the monster had more abilities than they had seen? The battle against the first unranked monster had been when most people had not properly developed their abilities to their fullest extent. Their judgments and experience were lacking compared to the future as well. There could be missing variables in his record. Bang, bang. The now horned blue head slammed its horn into the ceiling. Crock, croc. The ceiling slowly started to crack. But it did not matter. Zhou Minye's spider web and people to help her should be waiting above. But the situation had changed. Kale started to speak. Choi Han. What is the yellow head's other ability? Bong. Bang. He could hear loud noises and things breaking coming from the other side of the walkie talkie. Things were urgent on that side as well. No, it should be even harder than this side. Kale started to frown. Choi Han. He heard Choi Han urgently responding after he shouted Choi Han's name once more with anxiety. Earth. Or maybe dirt. Earth. Dirt. The yellow head has currently changed directions and is digging through the ground. Kale made eye contact with Lee Su Hyuk at that moment. Both of them realized it at the same time. It's coming. It's heading over. Kale's gaze slowly headed back toward the blue head. The yellow head is moving south, it is heading toward Dayon Station. The yellow head was heading over here toward the blue head. Chapter 598. Look at the back of the person standing in the front, 4. The other monster was headed to Dayon Station, it was coming to meet up with its other half. After having that thought, Lee Su Hyuk grabbed Kale's wrist and pulled the walkie-talkie in Kale's hand close to him. Attack. His voice sounded urgent. Prevent the yellow head from coming here as best as you can. Lee Su Hyuk knew because he had faced off against the blue head. We won't be able to do it if the yellow head gets here. After going up against the blue head, he could tell how unbelievably strong this monster would be if the blue head and yellow head came together. Lee Su Hyuk could hear Choi Han's urgent voice. We are trying to prevent it as best as possible, but we are unable to attack from the front or sides as it is digging a hole to travel underground. And most importantly, it is moving too quickly that it is difficult to launch attacks. Most importantly, it is moving too quickly that it is difficult to launch attacks from the rear as well. Lee Su Hyuk started to frown. He couldn't understand something. What are you talking about? There should be some ability users with speed-related abilities there. I thought we split the people with speed-related abilities equally between each squad. Bong. Bong. They could hear things breaking through the walkie-talkie. That Lee Su Hyuk felt frustrated after hearing Choi Han hesitate. It was at that moment. 
A cold and calm voice reached Lee Soo Hyuk's ears. I'm sure the foundation is crumbling. What? Lee Soo Hyuk's turned toward Kale. But Kale brushed Lee Soo Hyuk's hand away and brought the walkie talkie closer to him again. Choi Han, properly report about the situation. My apologies. Choi Han then continued to speak in a much calmer voice. The foundation has started to crumble because the yellow head is digging a hole to move, which is why we had to evacuate the people stationed at the stations. The foundation will probably crumble in an instant. You must have used the speed type ability users to move all of our allies to safe areas. Yes sir. Ah. Lee Soo Hyuk subconsciously gasped. He had not even considered that the foundation might be crumbling. But he quickly realized that the chances of that happening were very high. Even if we started some work to repair it, this is a destroyed city. It would be weird if the foundation didn't crumble. The foundation could not be held up with a few days worth of repairs. Lee Soo Hyuk looked toward Kale with an odd expression. Kale continued to speak in a calm voice at that moment. Was that your decision? It was a joint decision by Mr. Mansu, Grandma Kim, Miss Lee Jin Ju and I. There was a moment of silence through the walkie-talkies. Eventually, Choi Han started to speak again. I'm sore. Good job. Choi Han shut up after hearing Kale's response. If we could only attack from the rear anyway, it's better than pushing people to the point where some of them get hurt. Lee Soo Hyuk agreed with Kale and nodded his head. Each and every person was precious right now. Kale continued to speak to Choi Han. Choi Han. Lee Soo Hyuk could see Kim Rock Soo's gaze turn sharp. Kale's eyes were looking at the ceiling as he continued to speak. I'm sure you're chasing it, aren't you? That's right. Of course I am chasing after it. I left the rest to Mr. Jang Man Su, Grandma Kim, and Miss Lee Jin Ju. Kale nodded his head as if this was the obvious response. Lee Soo Hyuk felt odd looking at Kale and hearing that it was obvious for Choi Han to chase that strong monster on his own. It felt as if he was seeing the bond between two people who had been through many battles together. Kale started to speak at that moment. Choi Han. He started to think about the people Choi Han had left behind to take care of things. Mr. Jang Man Su's shield should be able to delay the crumbling foundation. Grandma Kim would heal the wounded while Lee Jin Ju's amplification would allow them to move people without any confusion or chaos. Kale started to look at something else. Bang. Bang. The horn on the blue head started to expand the crack in the ceiling. Croc the ceiling would break soon. He started to speak to Choi Han again. Don't get hurt. No need to say something so obvious, Rock Su hung. It was at that moment. Croc. The blue head finally cracked through the ceiling and pushed its horn toward the surface. Choi Han, see you soon. Kale could see the light as soon as he said that. Although the sky was covered in fog, the outside was still brighter than the underground. Roar. The blue head roared as it pushed its body toward that light. It felt as if the blue head was an Imugi leaving a dark cave and ascending to the heavens. Ascending? Kale contacted the walkie-talkie to someone else as soon as he had that thought and started to shout. Spiderweb. The blue head seemed to be responding to him as it started to head toward the surface even faster, looking like a blue eye moogie in the process. The horn and head was already above ground and the body was quickly coming up as well. However, the blue head could not stop screeching even though it was above ground. Hold on to the spider web. Jo Min Ye shouted and her long white hair that came down to her hips shot out in all directions. A large white spider web instantly appeared. Grab onto it as the squad leader Nim mentioned, hold on tight. Push your legs into the ground and hold on. We can't be dragged by the monster. The white spider web fell on the blue monster. The blue monster started to flail. Pull. Raise it up. We need to capture it. All ability users nearby pulled the spider web from their respective locations with both hands. They could hear the monster's angry shouts. Kale heard Joe Minye's voice through the walkie talkie at that moment. We won't be able to last long. Kale was already moving up. I have faith. He could hear Ju Ho Sheik's shout. Yes. Although the situation had changed with an unexpected variable. We still have to do what we need to do. Of course, Kale probably had to do more than he had expected to do. The people could see something shoot up from underground after the blue monster. It was a person covered in rose gold thunderbolts. Commander. Foresight. They had only heard about that ability, but they had never seen his attacking ability before. They had only heard rumors about how he was strong. As their young commander shot up into the air, screech. The blue monster made a noise that was different than before as it pulled its body above ground. It then tried to get out of the spider web. Rip the spider web started to rip because of the blue head's horn. Squad leader Nim. Jo Min Ye raised her hand toward the people shouting at her. Her commander had given an order to the walkie-talkie in her other hand. Retreat. Jo Min Ye shouted with one hand still in the air. Retreat. The spider web covering the blue head quickly disappeared. That white spider web came back to the tips of Jo Min Ye's hair and the others quickly retreated as well. They then saw it. Screech. They saw that there was a steel spear stabbed into the body of the monster that had just come above ground. 
They could also see some gray clouds that were different than the fog start to form above the blue monster. In addition, they could see their commander being surrounded by wind as he floated high up in the air above the monster and point down to it. Finally, they could see a rose gold thunderbolt that seemed to take away all noise and light from the area shoot down toward the monster, and specifically the steel spear. They saw all these things, they had seen these things in just a few seconds. After a few more seconds, bong, a loud explosion covered the ground. Holy shit, such strength, eek, move back, move farther back. The people escaping the thunderbolt retreated while being unable to take their eyes off this fearsome yet beautiful rose gold light. Screech. The rose gold thunderbolt flowed down the steel spear and into the blue monster's body. However, there wasn't even a scratch on the beautiful blue scales. Gur, gur. The thunderbolt that had crawled into the injury like a snake and attacked the blue monster's weak insides was destroying it from inside. The fire of destruction, it was living up to its name. Ah. As someone gasped, the blue monster's body slowly tilted to the side. Boom it fell on the ground with a loud noise, it sounded as if a large tree had fallen. Everybody was at a loss for words for a moment. One ability user pointed to the sky at that moment. Ha! Huh. The commander Nim. Kale's body curled forward as he floated in the air. The gray cloud was already gone and the wind surrounding Kale was slowly disappearing as well. Ah! Uh, a handful of dark red blood burst out of Kale's mouth. Kale quickly covered his mouth with his hand, but everybody had clearly seen the blood. Kale kept his mouth covered with his hand as he quietly mumbled to himself. Did I use too much power? He had used more strength than he had planned because he had felt rushed. I can't faint right now. Kale mumbled as he felt his body slowly fall to the ground. He had called back the sound of the wind on purpose. However, the people watching him were thinking that their commander had used too much strength that he was unable to use his wind any longer and was coughing up blood as he fell unconscious. They couldn't help but flinch because a person, who already looked weak to start, was falling down looking like a weak autumn leaf. It was at that moment, Bei Pu Rum. Lee Su Hyuk called out Bei Pu Rum's name. Why, yes. Bei Pu Rum who had followed Kale into the air and had blankly watched Kale use his powers, quickly turned toward the extremely cold voice calling his name. Hurry up and support him. Ah, of course. Bei Pu Rum snapped out of it after hearing Lee Su Hyuk's cold yet urgent voice. He then quickly flew up, it was to save the falling Kale. However, Bei Pu Rum had a thought on his mind as he flew over. That was completely different. This one was completely different than the thunderbolt that Kim Rock Su had used in the original shelter. The thunderbolt he had used just now was so destructive that it felt as if the numerous thunderbolts he had used during the original shelter battle had all gathered into one. Bei Pu Rum finally realized the difference between a battle where they had to last for 24 hours and a battle that they needed to finish as quickly as possible. At the same time, he's an amazing person, his feelings for Kim Rock Su had moved past respect to admiration. That was why he raised his speed as he needed to rescue the falling Kim Rock Su. Huh? Bei Pu Rum flinched. There was something that was quicker than him. Tisk. Are you coughing up blood again? Something black had burst out from in between the fog-covered buildings. This is why I need to keep an eye on you. The dark tiger majestically caught Kale and put him on its back as its black mane fluttered. Boom. It then landed in a similarly majestic fashion. As everybody flinched at this, Kale lifted his body up as he sat on Alberu's back. He then started to shout while his mouth was covered in dark red blood. What are you all doing? Everybody flinched at Kale's completely emotionless and cold voice. Lee Su Hyuk made eye contact with Kale at that moment and Kale started to speak again. Are you all blanking out with the enemy in front of you? Ah. Lee Su Hyuk quickly turned his gaze toward the monster. It's still alive. It was still alive. They had forgotten about checking the status of the enemy because they had been focused on Kim Rock Su's unbelievable strength and the enemy that had flailed before it fell. CHH. CHH. The eyes of the heavily breathing blue monster were looking for an opening to escape. Fuck. Did I really have such a stupid reaction? How many friends left this world before me while acting the same way? Lee Su Hyuk started to frown and immediately pulled out his sword. Clang. He then started to run toward the monster. He was not the only one. Kim Min Ah and Bei Pu Rum followed behind him to support him. Park Jin Tae's gun was pointed at the blue monster's eyes as well. It was at that moment. Boom. 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 The ground started to shake. They could feel vibrations coming from underground. It was coming from the north. It was coming from something underground headed toward them from the north. It was that bastard. It was the yellow-headed monster. Fuck. Shit. Kale and Lee Su Hyuk both started to swear. Lee Su Hyuk, hurry. Cut its neck off. Kale said that before starting to speak to Alberu. Hung Nim, to the north. Even I can tell, if it is this aura. The dark tiger's body headed north to where Kale was pointing. Everybody looked toward that direction as well, huh? Someone subconsciously gasped. The ground, the ground is moving up and down. The ground was indeed moving up and down. 
It was as if something was headed toward them from beneath. It was as if that something was trying to shoot up into the air from underground. Kale looked at this and started to shout, Everybody move behind me, and Lee Su Hyuk. It was at that moment. I know. Lee Su Hyuk's back became covered in cold sweat again and his full strength was gathered at the tip of his sword. Lee Su Hyuk then swung his sword. CHH. Shosh. CHHH. Slash. The moment Lee Su Hyuk's sword slashed through the airway of the heavily breathing blue head. Bong. The yellow headed monster shot up from underground in front of Kale's eyes. Chapter 599. Look at the back of the person standing in the front. 5. The yellow eyes were looking directly at Kale. Shit. Kale quietly mumbled to himself as he stopped his assessment of the yellow head, but it was not the same for the others. This quickly? Was the other one supposed to come? I didn't know. Did the plans go wrong? Wow. Shit. This bastard seems even stronger. People were busy responding based on the information they had after seeing the yellow head appear. But that did not last long either. Blue blood shot into the air as if it was river water flowing in the opposite direction. Gur, gur. The grounded blue head's body was flailing wildly. Click. All people saw was Lee Su Hyuk, who was covered in blue blood, bursting up. Lee Su Hyuk's eyes were not focused on the people looking at him but somewhere else. Roar. The yellow head's eyes started to glow. Crackle. Crack. Golden currents rose out to cover the yellow monster's body. The yellow eyes and Lee Su Hyuk's black eyes. The two sets of eyes were directly looking at each other. Commander. Lee Su Hyuk called out to Kale as he slowly started to walk. He was walking toward the yellow monster. I'll slash again if you just take care of that electricity. He had said that he wanted to be in the front. Lee Su Hyuk was someone who kept his word. Based on what Kim Rock Su mentioned, only I am able to slash through those scales right now. Crack, crackle. The yellow head that was now covered in beautiful golden light slowly opened its mouth. Gur, gur, the monster's eyes were full of anger as it growled like an animal. Even if you do that. Clang. Lee Su Hyuk took his sword out of the scabbard again. You're still just my prey. His body started to charge off the ground and toward the enemy once again. Stop. It was at that moment. Kim Rock, no, Commander? Lee Su Hyuk stopped moving as he was shocked at Kale's shout. But Kale didn't have time to look at Lee Su Hyuk. I missed the moment. Kale had the people prepare for everything but had forgotten about it for a moment because of the sudden appearance of the yellow monster. He might not have the time to use what he had prepared anymore. I can't let that happen. Crack. Crackle. The beautiful monster that was covered in bright golden currents resembled a yellow dragon. Boom the monster glared at Lee Su Hyuk and raised its head. Cover your ears. Kale sounded urgent. He immediately shouted again. I said, cover your ears. What? Lee Su Hyuk flinched after hearing that before recalling something. The yellow monster's ability to handle dirt was something they had just learned. It also had control of currents, as visible by the radiant currents surrounding the yellow head right now. There was one last ability. The yellow-headed monster's other ability that the commander had told them about. Sound. Lee Su Hyuk had been distracted by the golden currents such that he had not noticed that the monster's neck was stiffly headed toward the sky. But he could see it clearly now that he noticed it. The yellow monster's body was bloated. It looked as if it had sucked in a lot of air. It looked as if it was about to scream. Fuck. Lee Su Hyuk started to frown as he quickly dropped his sword. He then put his hand into his inner pocket to try to look for the earplugs. But he quickly realized it. It's too late. Lee Su Hyuk made eye contact with the yellow monster at that moment. Smile. Its yellow eyes curled up like crescent moons. It's smiling? It seemed to be sneering as if it was human. He could feel it based on the monster's action. That bastard covered its body in currents on purpose. It used its electricity to gather people's attention and then acted as if it would attack Lee Su Hyuk in anger. But in the end, it was planning on using its sound ability. Lee Su Hyuk looked toward someone. The yellow head's mouth opened at the same time. Screech, Kale was able to cover his ears in time as he had taken out his earplugs while shouting at the others to cover their ears. Kale then realized his mistake. Hey, you should have told me in advance too. Hung Nim. That was the case. Alberu was also here. Kale lowered his head. The dark tiger, which had much larger ears than he did, started to frown. Screech, the yellow head screech that continued without stopping was not a simple scream. It caused vibrations in the air which made Kale's clothes flutter. It was quite loud even with the earplugs in his ears. Ah. Alberu's body staggered. Kale urgently got off his back. Um. Kale's body staggered as well since he was a bit worn out. Shit. But he was still in a better condition than the others. Ah. My ears, my head, gasp. There were ability users all around who had not managed to cover their ears and could no longer control their bodies properly. Some of them were bleeding from their ears while others were clutching their heads. Most of them looked quite dazed. A few of them might snap out of it in a few seconds but most will be like this for a few minutes. 
Kale looked toward the people who were the closest to him. Ah! To think I would make such a mistake! Park Jin Tae stumbled while holding his ears with his gun still in his hand. Min Ah! You're so loud! Bei Pu Rum was staggering but still managed to get to Kim Min Ah, who was on one knee, and supported her. Bei Pu Rum's eyes were full of fear. It could cause such damage with just noise. He now understood why Kim Rock Su kept warning them over and over about the unranked monsters. The commander Nim didn't give the blue monster any time to attack properly because these unranked monsters are so scary. Bei Pu Rum clenched his eyes shut after seeing that even Lee Su Hyuk had his eyes closed and was holding his head. Fuck. Something like this happened as soon as we followed it up. Kim Kong Hoon, Lee Sung Wan, and Ju Ho Shik who were climbing up from the subway tunnel were holding their ears as well. Sis. Bei Pu Rum suddenly felt chills on his back. SSSSH, in this short moment while everybody was out of it. There was an enemy that would not miss this opening. It was the yellow monster that had screeched. Ah. Bei Pu Rum tried to focus his sight that was shaking from having a headache and looked toward someone. He was looking for the person who had shouted for them to cover their ears. That person was charging toward the yellow monster on his own. N, N. No. That person had just cast a shockingly strong rose gold thunderbolt just now and had coughed up blood. That person charging toward the monster on his own sounded dangerous. SSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSS
he was looking at the eyes of the yellow monster on the other side of the shield. And the moment he looked into those eyes, Kale started to frown. The yellow monster truly was shrewd. Smile. The yellow head's eyes curled up again as it smiled. Kale finally realized what this bastard was aiming to do. He had not been able to look at the yellow monster's movements properly because it looked as if it was charging toward the people. He had not noticed it because he suddenly recalled his forgotten time as Kim Rock Su the employee after seeing the despair in the people's eyes as they stood in front of this unranked monster. The yellow head instantly turned its large body to the side. SSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSSS
There were people who were bleeding out of their ears and finally getting back up. The entire area was a mess because of the electricity attacks and the digging. Then there was the large headless body of the blue monster. Kong Il Rei lamented the fact that he could not hurry over any faster and barely managed to speak. I'm sorry. We would have rushed over if we knew it would get away. Who said that? Huh? His gaze headed toward Kale who was being supported by Zhou Minye. Kong Il Rei had flinched after seeing a pale Kale bleeding out of his mouth before flinching once more after looking into Kale's eyes. Kale's cold sunken gaze had the persistence of a hunter. Kale slowly asked again. Who said? That it got away? Everyone's gazes headed toward one person at that moment. Kale looked in the direction the monster had disappeared to as he continued to speak. We're going to Siomian. Even if it left this area. Even if it started to hide. Even if it ran away. That's the only place that that bastard can come. Both that bastard and he had the same final destination. The first unranked monster had appeared on November 6th. One day had passed since then. Currently, it was 11 p.m. on November 7th. The electric eel monster still had not shown up again. Only the thick fog around all of Busan let them know that the bastard was still alive and hiding somewhere while aiming to take them out. Kale was standing at the watchtower when he heard Lee Su Hyuk's voice behind him. Hey, Rock Su. Isn't it your birthday tomorrow? Chapter 600. Even if it takes my last breath, one. Kale continued to look forward without turning around as he started to speak. I don't recall ever telling you my birthday. Kim Rock Su had not shared his birthday with anyone during this time. He had recorded his birthday later, when he joined the company and had to give some personal information. Lee Su Hyuk remembered that information and took care of Kim Rock Su and Choi Young Su's birthdays. That was how it went until the two of them died. Han told me about it. Kale nonchalantly responded to Lee Su Hyuk's answer. Did you know that it is Choi Han and Choi Young Su's birthdays as well? Really? Kale slowly turned his body and looked at Lee Su Hyuk since it was rare for him to sound flustered. Lee Su Hyuk, whose mood had been quite sharp since yesterday, seemed oddly anxious. Kale started to smile in response. What is it? Did you prepare a birthday party for me or something? Huh? Lee Su Hyuk had an awkward expression on his face. It's not a party since we are in a pretty serious situation. He then scratched his cheek. Just some late night snack time? It seems like you included Choi Han and Choi Young Su to prepare for that late night snack time? Lee Su Hyuk looked flustered again. No, I, shall we go? Huh? For the thing you prepared. Let's celebrate all of us. Lee Su Hyuk jovially scoffed after hearing Kim Rock Su say everything he wanted to say. Yes. Let's go. He then looked elsewhere. Hyo Su Kya and Zhou Minye were walking toward Kale and Lee Su Hyuk. Have a safe trip. Hyo Su Kya smiled as she addressed Kale. I'm sorry. Zhou Minye waved her hand to say no after seeing Kale lower his head and apologize. Not at all. Everybody knows how hard you've worked today, Commander Nim. We heard you didn't even get a chance to eat properly. Hyo Suk Ya who was standing next to her started to frown. She had not heard the details of the battle because she was here defending the Siomian shelter. All she had heard was that the yellow head had escaped in the end. She had also heard that it had run away with the blue head in its mouth. That meant that the plan had failed. However, she could not be angry about the situation. She had seen how Commander Kim Rock Su was covered in blood compared to everybody else who only had light injuries or no injuries at all. Everybody had said the same thing. They would have all been seriously injured or dead if he was not there. Commander, Hyo Suk Ya opened her mouth before stopping herself mid sentence. Commander, you should rest a bit. That was what she wanted to say, but she could not say it. He can't rest. This young man could not rest. She felt sorry about it, but it was the truth. Please enjoy your time. Lee Su Hyuk, who was quietly walking next to him, started to speak. Rock Su. Yes, sir. You're really good at keeping your promises. Kale looked toward Lee Su Hyuk with a confused expression. However, Lee Su Hyuk did not look at Rock Su at all on their way to the room closest to the watchtower and the castle wall. What do you mean? Lee Su Hyuk smiled and slowly answered after Kale finally asked. Yesterday and today. People probably saw your back the most. Kale recalled what he had said to them a few days ago. The people here will fight while looking at my back the most, at least for this battle. Lee Su Hyuk continued to speak. It was the case during yesterday's battle. Even today, your back was clearly visible as you stood by the watchtower all day. I need to keep my promise. Lee Su Hyuk grabbed the doorknob and looked toward Kale, who answered nonchalantly. Yes. That's the Kim Rock Su I know. Screech. Kale could see the sights inside the door. He slowly started to smile. Huh. Mister. I thought you would give us a signal first. How can you just suddenly open the door like that? Ah, it wasn't supposed to be like this. Kim Min Ah and Bei Poo Rum shouted in shock. There was quite a lot of food on the table inside this small office. It was not a fancy feast, but it was the best they could do in their current situation. Choi Han, Choi Young Su, Kim Min Ah, Bei Pu Rum, Park Jin Tae, 
the Lee siblings, and everybody else who had a connection with Kale were all gathered in this small office. Kale started to smile. Looks great. The two words he said made the entire office go silent. Then people started to openly or discreetly smile one by one. Lee Su Hyuk started to point at that moment. Hey, Han and Young Su. Choi Young Su flinched at the sudden attention. I heard it's both of your birthdays tomorrow as well. Come over here. Choi Young Su's eyes opened wide after hearing what Lee Su Hyuk said. How did you? Rock Su told me. Bei Pu Rum rubbed his arm as if he had the chills before starting to shout. Damn. Does Foresight tell you things like that too? Who knows? Lee Su Hyuk responded to Bei Pu Rum before looking toward Kale. Kale shrugged his shoulders and looked back with a gaze that seemed to be asking if there was a problem. Lee Su Hyuk quietly looked at him for a while before asking a question. Rock Su. His voice was extremely quiet, as if he was whispering. Is Foresight really how you can know about things like this too? Kale turned toward Lee Su Hyuk. The two of them looked at each other for a bit before Kale broke the eye contact and walked toward the table. The words Kale whispered as he left echoed in Lee Su Hyuk's ear. Who knows? Why don't you figure it out if you're so curious? Peefed. Lee Su Hyuk chuckled before starting to speak to everyone. All right, let's sing for the three of them. You're right. Ju Ho Shik nodded his head in agreement before clasping his hands together. Sir, hap. Hey, why are you saying sir? Park Jin Tae started to frown before looking toward a corner of the ceiling and continuing to speak. Just say happy birthday. That's right. I can't call him sir, now can I? Grandma Kim smiled before starting to clap. Happy birthday to you. She started to sing and the rest of the people in the room joined in as well. Kale reached his hand out while standing at the center of the songs. You guys come join me. One hand grabbed Choi Young Su, the other hand grabbed Choi Han, and he pulled the two of them closer to him. No ah, really, what the heck is going on? Choi Young Su looked flustered and confused as he accepted the birthday song directed toward him. On the other hand, Choi Han was completely stiff. Kale just batted Choi Han's shoulder. Choi Han's pupils slightly shook. His eyes moved past Kale and Choi Young Su to take in this whole scene. The song soon came to an end. Happy birthday to all three of you. Happy birthday. I believe that November 8th is a great day. All right, all right, let's eat. Everybody made a comment once the song ended. Choi Han heard Kale's calm voice next to him at that moment. There's still some time left, but Choi Han turned back toward Kale. Choi Han. Yes, Hung Nim. Happy birthday. Kale could see the ripples in Choi Han's eyes. They were not like strong waves crashing against the shore, but gentle waves splashing and shining brightly. Happy birthday to you too, Hung. Kale nodded his head and turned his gaze. Choi Young Su. Huh? Choi Young Su still seemed confused. Kale started to speak after a long pause. Kale recalled Choi Young Su's voice in his mind at that moment. Rock Su. Super duper happy birthday to you. Ah ha 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 ha. Shut up. Ha. Hey Rock Su, can't you be excited and wish me a happy birthday too? I guess not. Kim Rock Su is not that kind of person. Who said I wasn't going to wish you happy birthday? Kiki, so you're going to wish me happy birthday? Of course. How could I not? Kale slowly started to speak. Happy birthday. Choi Young Su's eyes opened wide. The words Kale said with a gentle smile on his face seemed quite meaningful to brush aside. That was why he couldn't just brush it aside. Choi Young Su subconsciously started to stare at Kale. Tap. Kale patted Choi Young Su's shoulder once and then started to walk toward the others. Lee Su Hyuk had watched all of it. His gaze was following Kale, as if he was trying to analyze him. Kale knew about it as well, he just pretended not to know. Now that both Lee Su Hyuk's gaze and Kale were gone, Choi Young Su, who was calming himself down, could see someone walking toward him. Why don't we head outside for a moment? It was Choi Han. Choi Young Su was about to ask why they needed to go out before he saw Choi Han's hand. The hands of the guy who seemed younger than him, but had many scars that proved he had lived a difficult life, were fidgeting as if he was a bit nervous. He's fidgeting? Choi Young Su felt as if this was not like Choi Han before he was swept up with an eerie feeling. His last name, birthday, and sword art, they were all the same or similar. Yes. Let's go. Choi Young Su followed Choi Han outside. They then stood in a corner of the hallway facing each other. Choi Han did not say anything for a while. What did you want to see me for? Choi Young Su could not hold it in any longer and asked, and Choi Han responded by taking a thick pile of papers out of his pocket and handing it to him. What is this? Take it. Choi Young Su was confused but still accepted the pile of paper. He peeked at it for a moment but it was difficult to tell what it was as the first page did not have anything written on it. Choi Young Su had no choice but to look toward Choi Han for an answer. Quote dot dot dot. It's a present. He didn't know why, but he started to frown after hearing that. Choi Young Su subconsciously started to speak. Do you know me? 
Choi Young Su slightly regretted the thing he said. The hands that looked nervous until now calmed down and Choi Han's face no longer showed any emotions. I will not answer any of your questions. Choi Young Su became frustrated after hearing Choi Han's response. That was why he impulsively responded back. Then I guess you won't mind me figuring it out on my own. Choi Young Su could see a small smile appear on Choi Han's face at that moment. Yes, I would have no choice if you did that. Choi Young Su felt as if his heart was tightening for some reason. He had already been thinking about his family because everybody had wished him a happy birthday. His heart was beating restlessly. Choi Young Su's expression and his demeanor calmed down in order to hide the restlessness inside him. It was similar to what Choi Han was doing. Neither Choi Han nor Choi Young Su knew how similar they were right now. I understand. Choi Young Su put the present in his pocket and started to speak. I will definitely figure it out. He then looked toward Choi Han and added on. I don't have a present for you. However, happy birthday. Choi Han's eyes opened a little wider. I mean it. Choi Young Su answered honestly. You've helped me with my sword art and training. He didn't know why Choi Han did all of that, however. Actually, there were too many suspicious things for him to claim that he didn't know the reason at all. He couldn't help but have many, maybe, types of thoughts. But Choi Young Su did not say those out loud. It was okay to say it once everything became certain. I know that you are taking a lot of time to help me. That was why Choi Young Su slightly bowed toward this man who was younger than him but did not seem younger at all. Thank you very much. Maybe. Just maybe, Choi Han was the first sword instructor Choi Young Su ever had, aside from his family. Choi Young Su had just called him Mr. Choi Han since Choi Han didn't call himself instructor nor master and didn't want to be addressed that way, but Choi Han was still like a master for Choi Young Su. Choi Young Su started to raise his slightly lowered head. He heard Choi Han's voice at that moment, it's me. His voice was a bit cracked, it's me who is thankful. Choi Young Su urgently raised his head after hearing Choi Han speaking informally in a different voice than normal. But Choi Han's expression was the same as usual, it was as still as his blade. Please head in first. Choi Young Su suppressed this if he feeling inside after hearing Choi Han's comment and nodded to say goodbye before heading toward the door. Um, he flinched after seeing Kale standing by the door, but managed to get the words out. Happy birthday. Thanks. Choi Young Su opened and closed his mouth a few times after hearing Kale's calm response before he walked past Kale and back into the room. Choi Young Su started to think, I have a lot of time. After they took care of this unranked monster that was trying to attack this Seomian shelter, he could get rid of these frustrating and annoying things on his mind at that time. And, if we get a bit closer, they could talk about it at that point. Choi Young Su had those thoughts as he closed the door behind him. Choi Han and Kale were the only ones left in the hallway. Choi Han. Yes. Rock Su Hung. Kale, who quietly looked at Choi Han who was acting as if everything was fine, chuckled before starting to speak. I thought you had no plans on revealing the truth, but I guess that's not the case? Choi Han's shoulders slightly flinched, that. He opened his mouth but could not say anything, he wasn't planning on telling Choi Young Su that he was his paternal cousin once removed. But it was his birthday. It was the birthday of Choi Young Su who was all by himself now. For Choi Han, who didn't know when he would leave this world, this might be the first and only time he could celebrate Young Su's birthday with him. But Choi Han had endlessly worried about whether he was making the right decision. That concern was still going on. Choi Young Su was continuously questioning Choi Han's existence. It was at that moment, good job, he heard Kale's warm voice. Choi Han focused to hear the quiet voice that only he could hear. You wanted celebrated with him, your family member's birthday. Choi Han couldn't respond to that. Good job, but Choi Han's lips started to move after hearing Kale praise him. His lips formed a straight line, making it unable to tell whether he was trying to smile or stop himself from crying. Pat. Pat. Kale patted Choi Han's shoulder. Choi Han could see Kale heading out of the hallway once those pats did not feel weird anymore. Where are you going? The watchtower. Let's go together, Hung Nim. Choi Han could not tell him to get some more rest. It was because Choi Han was the person who understood Kale's desire to protect this place and quickly head back to the people waiting for him more than anybody else. But even Choi Han didn't know everything. Kale quietly looked down at the watch in his hand. 11.55 p.m. That day would soon arrive. The day that the god of death told him to make a decision would arrive in five minutes. He recalled the text from his memories. Less than grade one ability user Kim Rock Su. Greater than. Less than do you wish to return to your original world? Greater than less than or will you die in this world? Greater than. In five minutes, the time to make that decision would be here. Kale felt the calm night air as he quietly looked at the watch. Choi Han walked toward him. The people standing guard had headed down and only Kale and Choi Han were up here right now. Rock Su Hung, why don't you head down and have a warm cup of tea? Choi Han stopped talking. Uh, 
it was because Kale suddenly clutched the area by his heart and curled forward. Choi Han saw it at that moment. He saw that Kale seemed to be in so much pain, pain that was incomparable to anything he had felt until now. Kale Nim. Choi Han subconsciously called him Kale and started to support him. But Kale was looking down at the watch. Why? Ah. Uh. It felt as if his heart was being ripped out. No, an intense pain that felt as if his soul was being ripped out overwhelmed Kale. Why? It wasn't November 8th yet. What was going on? November 8th. Something was supposed to happen on that day. The God of Death was going to do something. That was what Kale had thought. But it was still November 7th. Kale started to frown. How entertaining. It was at that moment. Fuck. Kale started to frown even more after hearing a voice in his head. I can't just let you overcome your despairs, now can I? The sealed God was the one talking to him.